not only committed, we are prepared to say, I say, created by God himself in heaven to ensure that Biafra comes in our time. This very glorious family shall exist forever and ever, I assure you. It is an honor, it is a unique privilege. I find myself sometimes exceptionally blessed to be leading these very wonderful people, this very great nation. The answer to the deprivation that Africa has become, Biafra, is the only solution, the only way out of the maze of darkness, iniquity and evil that have bedeviled Africa for centuries. Therefore, we make no apologies. We have come that the blind may see. We have come that those who are deaf may hear. We have come that those who are living may continue to live and not fall under the machete, the bullets, and the knives of the terrorists that inhabit the Arewa Janjaweed territory of the Zoological Republic. Here we preach the truth the whole truth and nothing but the truth there is nothing our enemies can do they can threaten they can half they can puff but they can never blow the house down i assure you they know they know they understand how relentless and remorseless we are in the pursuit of this very noble quest our enemies will attest to the very fact that this very IPOB, they have never seen a type like it before. Therefore, I commend this very noble family. I commend every coordinator. I commend every principal officer. I commend every leader. I commend everybody who wakes up in the morning to offer a prayer to God in heaven for the preservation of IPOB and for the restoration of Biafra. For only them can see the light, for only them can inherit the kingdom of God that is to come, which can only be found in Biafra. Therefore, I say to all of you who are listening this evening, that indeed you are very lucky you are living in exciting times, a time of great change, a time of great hope, a time, of course, of great trepidation, but in the end we shall prevail because we are IPOB, because we are the children of light, because we are their friends, ultimately we win. Not minding whatever unpalatable circumstance we may find ourselves in, the priority remains the restoration of Biafra. It doesn't matter what the enemies are doing. It doesn't matter what their plans are. One thing is inescapable. At the end of this very journey, Biafra shall emerge to stand alone as the hope and the light and the beacon that Africa will look up to for generations to come. I welcome each and every one of you once again. Make sure you have your pen and your paper ready because this is the greatest and the very finest university on the face of this very earth. If you are not listening to Radio Biafra, you will be enveloped in ignorance if you are not part of this very noble family. The Janja weed from the Sahel will continue to wreak havoc not only upon your lives but also upon your destiny. Therefore, we must pray. We must call upon the Most High to because right now, in front of His throne in heaven is, of course, my father and my mother, because they believe very strongly that only the divine grace of the Most High shall restore Biafra. And that is why Biafra will come, because they have sacrificed their lives to ensure that those of us who are living shall be free. We must pray. We must pray. Wherever you are, you will lower your heads, because we dedicate everything that we are, everything that we have become, everything that we are likely to become, unto the capable hands of the creator of the heavens and the earth. Father, today, as we begin our prayer in praise and worship of your holy name, for you say we are fearfully and wonderful made according to the psalmist. 
According to the book of Psalms 139 chapter 14, we know this world is very hard. We know that existence in Nigeria is even hard. It's threatening to crush us every blessed day in far too many ways. Not just we, dear friends, but every ethnic composition unfortunate enough to be lumped together by Lugard in the damnable contraption that they call Nigeria. Physically, we cannot always outrun the ailments of our bodies. Sickness and injury take hold upon us. We are not always healed to the original state of our health. Mentally, we are bombarded and pulled by unfiltered thoughts threatening to run away with all that we represent on a daily basis. Spiritually, you promised us a battle in this life. The Janja weed from the north, the Alamajiri, the sponsors of Boko Haram, the terrorists who go into political office to wreak havoc and mayhem upon the lives of the defenseless. They are threatening our very existence and you have decreed that Biafra will come, that your children may be saved from the iniquitous existence in the colonial British contraption designed to exist slave to cage to ridicule and to destroy your children you must bring our hands to focus we plead the Elohim your truth at the start of each very day we expect a battle we will get a battle but also your deliverance is there because that is your promise you are God you never fail the same way you were yesterday you are today and shall remain forevermore father in heaven in overwhelming moments like this when we are being overrun by full and headsmen when we are having puppets being installed in Imo state to serve the whims and the caprices of the full and caliphate for moments like these we seek your truth as we are reminded that you are our hiding place you will protect us from troubles you will surround us with songs of deliverance according to the psalmist in the book of psalms chapter 32 verse 7 you will remind us of the greatness of our faith that have gone before us in bravery with courageous faith in your protective hand of deliverance we pray this very evening David defeated Goliath against all odds and even after being not did run for his life from King Saul he cried out unto you in faith and you delivered him even after he made terrible mistakes but you delivered David loving him until the end we remember those that have died and have fallen in this very effort. We remember those that have gone before us to shed their blood for our freedom. O oh, Heavenly Father, we commit them unto thy hands. Our faith shall sustain us. Our resoluteness, O oh Elohim, shall grant us victory in the end because you will lead this very army. This very army will stand in front of them as we go into battle to confront the forces of darkness that have brought misery, death, and pain upon your children. Come and give us your grace. Come and give us your mercy. That Biafra may come in our time. That your will in heaven may be done upon the face of this earth. That every generation that will come after this will testify that there is God in heaven. That Chupokika Biafra presided over all the affairs of men. And that Biafra came because you decreed it. That Biafra came because that was your wish upon the lives of those that call upon on your name in truth and in honesty as this very noble IPOB family has done and will continue to do until the end of time in the grace in the exaltation and adulation of your holy name now and forevermore we pray he said he said he said we must preach this very gospel 
the gospel of deliverance, the gospel of restoration, because without Biafra we are nothing. Today we expose the underbelly of the corrupt contraption. Today we continue to exercise a greater knowledge over the ignorance that pervades the entire damnable zoological republic. Today we shall lift the veil of corruption. Today we shall remove iniquity from the lives of those who have been condemned to live in mediocrity. We must preach this very gospel because a lot is happening in the zoo. It is our duty and our responsibility to bring this to the knowledge of the entirety of humanity. That heaven and earth may bear us witness that at this time, in this age, in this 2020, that this very gospel of truth was preached. That out of the ignorance of the many, the Janjaweed came down with their terrorist groups, they came down with Boko Haram, they came and visited us with their Fulani headsmen. ISIS in West Africa is slaughtering at will. Al Qaeda in the Maghreb is there destroying lives. They branded them bandits and kidnappers in the north, but the lives of people are ending in disgrace on the highways of the north. Every blessed day that is kidnapping everywhere. Terror all around us. And what have we done as a people? What have we done as the children of the Most High? We have done absolutely nothing. We complain and we do nothing. The same template that other people are today emulating was first encapsulated by IPOB. We formed BSS to protect the lives of our mothers and our children and of those who are innocent. I was in the United States of America. I was in California, in Los Angeles to be precise. I asked for guns and I asked for bullets because I knew what was coming. I knew that death would come. I knew that the heavens have turned blood. I knew that darkness will envelop the land. I preached that very gospel and I told them they did not listen. And today what is happening? The same thing they abandoned and said it will not work is what other people are copying. And our people have been left defenseless. The land of Biafra is the only place where there is no defense. If not for the bravery of the volunteer command of IPO who are on a daily basis sacrificing their lives to maintain and to ensure that our land is not overrun by the ginger weed, by the full and illiterates from the north. Many horrible things are happening in the zoo. Very horrible things are happening on a daily basis. Your lives have become meaningless. Priests are being beheaded. Mothers are being kidnapped, raped. Pregnant women are having their children cut out of their stomach. Horrible and terrible things are happening. And nobody is doing anything about it. Nobody is saying anything about it because they are all frightened. They are all compromised. They are all corrupt. They are fearful of their tomorrow. But here we are not afraid to preach this very truth. Here we know that the truth must prevail. Whoever created Nigeria, that monster, that evil that created that den of death must be put to shame. They must be shackled and they'll be put to shame and Biafra shall emerge and so with it. The freedom for all oppressed ethnic groups in that damnable zoological republic. They have abandoned their pattern dance one, pattern dance two, pattern dance three and four and five and six. And who knows what else? What is now happening in the zoo is an indictment of the very essence of being a Nigerian. If you claim you are a Nigerian, your stupidity and your idiocy is staring you in the face. What the Fulani Janja would have done to your lives is a demonstration that it is your natural right, obligation and duty to rise up to oppose iniquity. As represented in the government of the Fulani Caliphate you have in Asarok. This evening we shall lay them bare. This evening we shall expose them. 
This evening, the world will know that the zoo has almost, it is gone and gone for good. I said that the zoo will fall, and it has fallen. When I call it a zoo, don't get upset. Look at yourself in the mirror and ask yourself, which human being with common sense will inhabit a country that is as spectacular a failure as Nigeria has become? Look at yourself in the mirror and tell me if you will belong to a country or wish your children to belong to a country where all the horrible and terrible things happening in Nigeria today obtains. Ask yourself that very simple question. You know now why we call that place a zoo. You will begin to understand it. I, in fact, I concede to my dear sister, who is an Hollywood actress, I've forgotten her name, who said that a zoo is a better place than Nigeria. It is about time that people become self-critical. When you become self-critical, believe me, you advance. That is why Western Europe colonized the whole world. That is why they are advancing in every sphere of human endeavor, because they believe in self-criticism. When they are doing wrong, they criticize themselves, they get better. I do not understand why people who call themselves human beings, not just in Nigeria, but all across Africa, all we do is to wallow in self-pity. Nobody rises up in the morning to ask, why is it that we have abundance of coal, of natural gas, of wall to wall sunlight, almost 24 hours every blessed day? Why do we have rivers? Why do we have all that means through which power can be generated? You have no electricity. That is an indictment of you as a human being. It means that your university education, your PhDs and all your degrees are entirely meaningless because the things that your brain is supposed to utilize all the resources around it to produce, you're not doing it. Uh, Europeans with two or three heads, I'm asking you, those who are advancing in Far East Asia, do they have two brains in their skull? They are human beings like we Africans are. But ask yourself this question, why is Africa not moving forward? Africa is not moving forward because of the level of mentality you find in a place called Nigeria today. This very evening, I want our people to try to be as reasonable as possible. Try to dissect and digest what you are being presented this evening because our job, our duty, our responsibility is to open your mind, to allow you to reason properly, to open your eyes that you can see very clearly because black Africans cannot reason very well. We don't see very well. We don't hear very well. This evening, I hope to be here as we embark upon this very journey of enlightenment, we will begin to repent, to offer ourselves for deliverance. Because if you do not offer yourself for deliverance, you can never be delivered. It's impossible. As Nigeria is crumbling on a daily basis, or should I say suffering under the weight of self-induced lawlessness. Lawlessness brought about by a government who do not obey the law. Lawlessness brought about by a group of people who did not even study law, nor understand what jurisprudence is all about. These are people who are a cake. These are people with a feudal mindset. These are people who can never, not in this world, not in the next, will they ever, ever attain the height of greatness. Impossible. They are the ones in charge of your lives. That is why, that is why a Supreme Court can sit down and when INEC is telling them that 850 something thousand people voted, a Supreme Court will sit down and tell you that the vote cast is over 900,000. And people are walking about and moving about, pretending everything is normal. That is what I find incredulous, absolutely debilitating in terms of those who will still retain some semblance of reasoning capacity. I do not understand it. If people just move along as if everything is okay. And I keep asking myself, 
why are black Africans like this? Why are the so-called Nigerians like this? Why can't you reason for once in your life and ask God in heaven to give you common sense? Nigeria was only created in 1914. Ask yourself, what was your identity before 1914? Who were you before 1914? Who is your grandfather? Who is your grandmother? Who is your great-grandfather? Does it mean that your life never had any meaning? The existence of your culture, no relevance until a white man descended from the abode in Badagri in Lagos and named you Nigeria. Can you begin to reason like human beings for what I pray and I beg of you? When you see us so poor, our roads are not being built, no hospitals, no good schools, people are lamenting. There is no need lamenting. Ask yourself, what have I done to encourage this reign of iniquity and impunity in the land? It is your silence because I believe that some of us are actually born into evil. That is why some of you gravitate towards what is bad, what can never be remedied. I understand today they said some, some local chiefs in Imo State, I don't know who paid them. Of course, somebody said they are faceless. Can a human being created, a human being created by God in heaven, given common sense, went to, 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 to primary school, to secondary school, to a, maybe a college somewhere, to do their A levels, and they went to university, you have a degree. And you're telling me that hope was them much will be in office. I, I cannot for the life of me understand it for one second. I cannot begin to understand it because it not only defies common sense, it is illogical. It is immoral before man and before God in heaven. What it means is that the fallen caliphate are in control of all our lives. If a governor misbehaves, they take him out and they put their puppet in. Be, I'm saying this because of those, all those psychophants, all those idiots who are gravitating around who puts on them. My children are putting in all I'm saying it, I'm very, it is not about Imo State. It is not even about Imo Land. It is not even about Biafra as a whole. It's not even about Nigeria. It is about humanity and doing what is right before God in heaven and man on this very earth. We shall come back to that later. Some of you don't know that your people are dying. I'm making this address this evening to World Ego Congress in the USA. They are the primary audience this evening. Of course, we know the whole world is listening, including some professors in universities across Argentina. We know they love Radio Biafra. We know that very much. I am asking you to go back to the broadcast I made sometime in 2015. When I was in the U.S., I was asking you for guns and for bullets. Some of you said, oh, no, no, the country wants to start a war again. I said, no, we, I, I have seen what is to come. What you have in Nigeria are not prophets. Everything I tell you is gospel. Don't tell me, ask me how it's possible. It is simple divine revelation. If you go through the things that I have told you in the past, all of, I said all of them, some of the events of today have surpassed my own predictions. I went to World Ebo Congress. They are called World Ebo. I said to them, give me guns and give me bullets because these murderers are coming. They are coming to kill us. They will kill us. These people, they are coming to take over our land. Let me even try and see if I can find, I think I asked the deputy today to try and circulate these very broadcast uh the one that i made before very very important i don't know if people are listening via our app i don't know if they are listening via our app because i'm getting reports here that some people are losing connection i don't know how to that is of course we know we have so many enemies they are trying they are fighting very hard but they are losing it's just like Trump. Forget all the nonsense, all the media hype, all the rubbish. At the end of the day, the people are with him the same way with this IPOB, the same way with this very position that I occupy. 
<laughs> Forget all the nonsense you're hearing. Oh, this is a service from Angel. We are not Biafra. We are rubbish. Go to the ground and ask the people that will tell you that their heart, their mind, their soul, and their body is with this very IPOB. They recognize the importance, the relevance, and the great work that IPOB is doing. I went to America and I said to our people in the USA, Give me guns and give me bullets. The zoo, being very clever, of course, advised by the British, said, oh, charge him with reasonable felony. He wants to cause a war. I said, no. Today, don't you have Amoteku in your land? They will carry guns. Today, you have something called, oh, is it Dambro Bashege in the north? I don't know what they call it. They said they found it two days ago. Is that something I was saying to Warrior Congress? Today, as I'm speaking to you, our houses are being destroyed in a boy. Our defense in Ebony cannot stretch for the number of miles that the Nigerian army and their backup, the Fulani bandits and the terrorists are attacking on a daily basis. Some of you don't know this. When you say it, you... It, in fact, China said, China said, give it to America and want it distributed now to let our people know what is happening in Ebony. They don't understand what is happening in Ebony. And what, sometimes I feel sorry for the governors. I never thought I hear myself say this. I feel sorry for them. You have seen what happened to Hedjo. For hosting one and your lecture, he was one and her job lecture. And somebody, I think, I don't know if it was Obio, Obio Kodi, or was it a moderator who was interviewing him, uh, asked him, said, why is it that any time uh, 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 people gather from the East, the, the North will get very jittery? Just one and her job lecture. And one birthday party for, for, for Mbasuri Kameji. That is all. For our dear father, of course, he's our father. One only one birthday party, and they said he must go. He's trying to bring the people together. He must go. And some people in Imo State will have the temerity to open their mouth to talk rubbish and say that who puts on much will be in the boss house. We are coming for all of you one after the other. Mad, insane people. It's nothing to do with I don't know who who Amaki Hedra is. I don't want to know. I don't give a damn who they are. They're, in fact, they're all the same thing. They're, they're, all, uh, Abuja up. they're all the same. But what is right is right. This IPOB stands on the side of justice all the time. I said justice all, regardless of who is involved. When I was in detention, some of you may have forgotten. I fought for the release of so-called Boko Haram suspects because I knew those young boys from, from Niger State were innocent. I fought for them. Some of you may have seen the clips. When I used to go to, to, to federal high court, you know, I used to stand in, I called the, the, the journalists and I called the parents of, the, of, of this boy suffering at the hands of the DSS. Inhumane conditions are being kept. I asked them to speak up. And some of them were released as a result of that. We fight injustice regardless of who is affected. Regardless, and what is happening in Imo is a travesty. It's a shame on Imo, not just on Imo people, on the entire Imo race. It's a shame on the entire nation of Biafra, on all of us, on everybody. It is a shame because, as I warned you before, if it goes in through one ear, yeah, it comes out of the other one. Somebody uh, uh, that's coming also. Look at this Biafrans. What are they doing? That's coming us. Uh, but today they're slaughtering you, and they. Everything I said has it not come to pass? Have not uh, have they not abandoned the north to be circulating in my village? Yet some of you cannot reason. A war is going on in the north. Terrorists are taking over local governments in the north, and the so-called army designed equipped to fight them. Dianne Sama for the queen, and some of you think it's normal. That shows the extent of depravity in your brain. That shows you in a very bad light. That shows you why you were colonized by the Europeans. That shows you why Africa is the bottom of the pile in the whole world in terms of human development and progress. Because there is a part of your brain that is pure darkness and evil. Anywhere you see evil, you go there. Like Loretta and Onochi, or whatever the, 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 the that's what what woman's name is. Anywhere you see, you gravitate towards. In fact, I'm happy to say that the European media used to do that before. Anywhere they see evil from Flanny, they go and they support. Now they have repented. Now they have changed. Because it has affected them. 
I, I'm sure it has affected these families as well. It is not big news because Biafrans don't control the media space in Nigeria. So it's not big news, but on radio, Biafra, we preach it that the world may hear, that mankind may bear us witness, that the day it starts, nobody will come and say, "Oh, they, they are seceding." They want to, you know. Of course, we are now everywhere. Nobody can lie against us anymore. Forget all the all the fake pages of um, or blogging sites they have developed to publish junk and debunk their own junk they have published. Nobody can pocket IPOB. It is impossible. We are unstoppable. This train is unstoppable. If you stand in the way, you'll be crushed. And the zoo, what they are going through, they will tell you. They will tell you. Uh, this is for uh, for Otundi uh, Bonin. What are they called? They are called. Um, I'll come to the rest of the Biafrans later on. But these are the main culprits. This is what I'm addressing this to them. I want to tell you what is happening in the zoo called Nigeria to our people, to their friends, it's all over the place. But it is not big news. Why is it that Fulani terrorists hijacking GEO? Some of you don't know who GEO is. They place what is called the luxurious bus. It's a coach from the north to the east, from the north to the west. There's also Eze Water. They did not just abduct GEO motors, they abducted a luxurious bus carrying their friends. In uh, the aborted is and water, a luxurious bus. They also took young shall grow. But none of you, know, some of you don't know this. Some of us are uh, we on Facebook uh, gossiping and yapping, talking rubbish on Instagram, writing junk. We are us. Uh, uh, what the Fanes are teaching us is a new version of uh, this is not just coronavirus or virus, it's just something very similar but even more deadly. They took, they are now all the luxurious buses coming from the north, they take them. These are the ones that people managed to escape. One or two persons to raise alarm. And the police are speaking about it. Not running after the terrorists, not running after the bandits and the kidnappers, no. They are in Islam in my village. And you are telling me that such a country deserves to exist. You are telling me that a country that is, uh, that quite literally abandoned their commitment, their obligation, their constitutional duty to fight armed insurgency, left it and is perambulating in a village organizing a burial for their, for their traditional ruler. Can you believe that? Can, you, can anybody in their right senses, can any human being that has brain in their skull comprehend such absurdity? They cannot. But I want to tell you why why some of you condone it. I want to tell Nigerians why they condone evil. You condone evil because inside you, you are naturally bad. You are evil yourself. As I said earlier, I'm very glad that Yoruba newspapers, they have now repented. They have now seen the light. They have now seen the truth. What we are preaching is the truth. Nobody hates, I do not hate anybody. Before God in heaven and man, I, never, I don't hate anybody. But when you bring your reign of terror when you bring your nepotism when you bring your wire to try to deceive people we tell you no it cannot happen not in this very generation of IPOB it cannot happen have you seen how they quickly rushed and opened Iwacha seaport Calabawari have you seen it do you know why they have opened it is because of the work being done on this very platform by this very radio station by this very glorious worldwide family of IPOB by what we have done and of course in part to punish the Yoruba for for forming Amoteku World Yoruba Congress in America when Namdekano was asking for guns and bullets I want to tell you the result of your failure I want to tell you the result of your failure, collective failure, individualism gone crazy. All of you think only about your family. What, oh, my, my son is now in Yale. This one is in Stanford University. You forget the reason why you traveled abroad in the first place is to help those who are at home, not just your immediate family. The reason why God gave you the grace to travel abroad to see the light is to come and save those who are at home. It is also in the scriptures. Some of you don't, it is in the scriptures. 
those that came back to it, it, it was Joseph who was sold that came back to rescue the family from famine, took them to Egypt. When you're sent abroad, you're sent abroad for a purpose. You have a purpose. That purpose is not to train your one or two or three children to, to, to become relevant or to become mighty society where they are. No, it's to help those who are at home to bring that knowledge, that know-how and that expertise to alleviate the suffering heaped upon those who cannot help themselves. That is your job. I went to America. I went to Los Angeles and I addressed them. I told them, this is what is to come. They said, no. Today, GU or Los Angeles, how many people are in Los Angeles all the time? At any one time. It's a matter. Young shall grow. These are the ones we know. It is happening in Nigeria. And some people, some Biafrans are opening their mouth to say, oh, we, we need to maintain unity. We need to. In that unity, you are dying. In that unity, luxurious buses are being abducted. People are being killed on a daily basis. Priests are being murdered. Our own children are being buried in Kaduna. The latest priest that they beheaded, they killed, the, the seminarian, is, uh, has been buried in Kaduna, which is an abomination against our culture and our way of life. After seeing what is going on in, in, in that, I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't use um, Donald Trump's words. This is a family radio station. After observing what is somebody that has or claim to have common sense will rise up and tell you that they believe in one Nigeria. Let's work for unity. I am telling you that you are the personification of evil. If you can stay in a country where people who are traveling, innocent people, on a bus, the bus was hijacked. Did they hijack any Dangote trailer? Did they hijack any of their, of their transporters in the north? No, it is the ones belonging to Biafrans that they hijacked. You write, hey, hey, this is your Biafra is a scam. This is your dream. Idiots talking rubbish. People, they, they say, oh, no, the can is very vulgar. Well, I tell you the truth. The same thing that accused Trump of. The ordinary people understand what we are preaching, that we are preaching the truth. Ordinary people understand it. J.U. Omoto says and what a young shall grow, they're all gone. It's not from me, it's from their Zoo newspaper. The Nigerian police on Monday said G.U. Yes, and what a young shall grow, Los Angeles uh, uh, We are taking on local Jarod. People missing. Mothers being killed left, right, and center. A boy under siege. And what are you people doing about it? Absolutely nothing. You will come and you will tell me that somehow it is uh, it's good. Just remember, for those belonging or campaigning or should I say arguing for the for Nigeria to be sustained in its present form, go and say that to the to, to the four seminarians abducted from Kaduna. I was talking about Nadi Michael. He was found dead. He was he's, he's a follower of Christ in an area where they said it is a uh, haram to do so and he's been killed because the those around him believe in one nigeria if not for one nigeria will he be in the north doing seminary work he's been killed what will can do nothing if you provoke us so we'll do something else. we've been hearing it for nearly 18 years and nothing has happened when we preach on this platform the simple truth you see some people say they want to open 4,000, 4, no, no, not for 10,000 churches. You see how mad some people are. They call themselves preachers in the zoo. They go and they mount the pulpit and they talk rubbish. They collect that every Sunday. That is why, I, I, in fact, I will, when I pray, I will pray to God to tell my mother and my father what he put in, in the brain of black people, to be honest with you. People are dying in the zoo. Every blessed day, kidnapped, anarchy everywhere. As I told them, if some of you can recall my interview with Sahara Reporters, 
I said, if you do not give us, write it down. If you do not give us Biafra, Somalia will be a paradise compared to Nigeria. I said it. Have you not seen it? Today, <laughs> Nigeria is a worse place to live than Somalia. Go and check the terror index. As I told you, it will happen. When we say this, because some of you, you knew when we were going to school, when we grew up, you don't, you know, I'm not, uh, I didn't open the political search or say, I appreciate what we're doing, or what we're saying. But everything we say comes to, I said it. Biafra is the key. If they don't let Biafra go, believe you me, Chukuki Gabiama will destroy Nigeria beyond recognition. That what will happen in Nigeria, people will be wondering how is that possible. Write it down on this day, February 8, 2020. That is what I said. February 8, 2020. If they don't give us, watch, uh, sit down and watch what is going to happen to Nigeria. You, you think what is happening now is lawlessness. The real one is coming. The real lawlessness is coming. Because God, the people say, oh, God told me, God, uh, yes, I'm telling you. Because everything I said comes to pass. I told them, when I went to America, when I was at World War Congress, I was telling the whole world that they are coming. Did you believe me? When I told you that they were coming, did you believe me? Have they not come? When I told you that Nigeria would be worse than Somalia, did you believe me? Go and check the terror index. It is there. In black and in white. Nigeria is a more dangerous place to live in that. We have it started though. Some of you don't know what is in store for you. When it happens, I will tell you, I told you so on February 8, 2020. If you support one Nigeria, believe you me, Nigeria will consume you. You will be eaten alive. You will be eaten, you, you will be alive and breathing and your flesh will be torn off your body. One of the four abducted Cardinal Seminarians, his name is Nade Michael. He was found dead. One Nigerian. One, let's move forward in diversity. He was diversifying in Kaduna and they killed him there. Now, let me ask people one question. And also for Yoruba journalists who write junk, most of, of course, we are now friends. Of, all, of course, Yorubas are my brothers now, so I won't say anything against them. But I'm so saying, some of, there are still some from Kwara State uh, with due apology. There are some remnants, some diehard full any apologies from Kwara. They are in Lagos, somewhere. Still writing junk against Biafra and trying to promote their one Nigeria. And I have this question for them. Nadi Michael is an evil man. I'll call him a man, of course. He's, um, he's trying to become a priest. He was killed in Kaduna. And some of you don't know it is an actual abomination to bury one of us outside our ancestral home. Some of you don't know that I refer you also back to the scriptures, to the, I wouldn't, I, I call it the Torah. Forget about all this uh, thing. They, but for the purpose of, under, of, should I say, brother, understand, let me say the Bible. Even when Jacob died in Egypt, they took him back to the same land of his father, of Abraham. The same land of his father, Isaac. Have you not noticed? They don't bury us abroad. My mother died in Germany. She was flown back to be buried in the land of her ancestors. Do you understand that? That is who we are. But this Nadi Michael has been buried in Kaduna. We are praying for God to forgive us of the crimes we have committed. We are even committing more abomination on top of it. He's been buried in a, in a seminary ground in Kaduna. Who killed him? Let me ask you, let me ask this question to, to Yoruba people. Yoruba, not uh, all of you, those who have not yet repented, there's still the very bad ones amongst you. Let me ask you this question. Do you think that if Biafrans took up arms and formed a terror group, not one, not two, not three, but four, what would you do? Every Biafran would have been killed. Everybody slaughtered. I remember DW, Dutch Avela, coming to interview me, saying, are you not putting the lives of uh, Biafrans at risk in the north by this agitation? 
mere agitation for Biafra. They gave us quick notice in the north. If we hijack two or three buses containing Fulani people and slaughter them, throw their bodies in the river Niger, what do you think will happen to us in the north? I'm asking the Yoruba journalists this very question. What do you think will happen to Biafrans in the north? If it were Biafrans that formed Boko Haram, Fulani headsmen, ISIS in West Africa, Al Qaeda in the Maghreb, tell me what would have become of us today. There would be no single Biafran existing. They would kill everybody. But uh, <laughs> Fulani are the principal funders of four major terror groups in the world. On top of that, they're telling you who's going to be president and who's going to be vice. Now, I want you, as I keep saying, go and look at yourself in the mirror. And so looking at yourself, you, you should be asking God, why did you create me so stupid? And by so doing, put me in Nigeria. Go to the mirror. And believe you me, you will change by tomorrow. You become a better person. Go to the mirror. Look at yourself and ask yourself, God, why did you make me so stupid that I am part of one Nigeria? I ask you again, Listen carefully to my question. All of you clamoring for one Nigeria, talking rubbish against IPOB, which I love anyway. I love criticism, believe in me, I love it. It spurs me on every blessed day, I love it. Ask yourself, if it were the Igbos or the Jaws, kidnapping Yoruba people, kidnapping Fulani, kidnapping Hausa, kidnapping Baggy, and killing them at will, raping their mothers, cutting off their head, saying, Ututodri, uh, Chupoki, uh, what do you think everybody else would do? Simple question. You can't answer. One little coup in 1966, organized by the officer class from every tribe, every ethnic group in the zoo, they conducted a coup. After that coup, should I say failed, they used it as a pretext to slaughter 300,000 Biafrans in the north. 300,000 were killed in the north. A coup that involved the death of a few people. But look at Boko Haram. When they started, their signature attack was a St. Michael's Church. Once again, is it Mobi? St. Michael's Catholic Church. They know that their friends go there to worship. They attacked it. Here was their signature outing. I think it was Christmas Day bombing. I was in 2000 and um, I forgot in the year. I think uh, deputy will remind me in a second. You remember it? People died. We brought them back to Anambra. We are crying and saying, oh, this family has been wiped out. Oh, can you say there are no more? After that, we foolishly packed our bags and went back to the north. Today, what they are now doing is, it says you are not here. They wait for you on a bus. As you are coming back, they offload you and they kill you. All you do is you go to Channels TV, you go to AIT, you go to one of those idiotic talk shows you have in the zoo that makes no sense. And you'll be there talking rubbish. We need to move this country forward. We need to look at insecurity in the country. All of you are frightened to say that it is the Fulani who are doing the killings. You, know, you are frightened to say the truth. You are frightened to say that the Fulani are savages. These are savages from the darkest recesses of hell. You don't, you cannot say it because you're all cowards. Those of us in IPOB risking our lives, doing everything we can to enlighten the whole world about what is happening. You are there saying, uh, you know, this thing that they are doing. That shows your level of stupidity and idiocy. I ever heard some of them speaking or talking at a get gathering somewhere in Lagos regarding what is happening in Imo State. People are in governor of Imo State. And people are, people just, you know, some call him Excellency. And I'm, I, I'm, I said to myself, no, this, this, this is not the Ibo race. This wasn't the Ibo race that we read about that <sighs> Professor. Donald to see Bonoga taught me about this is not the, this is a chaff. This is not any you ought to have this. This is the, this is not Igbo race. No, God forbid. The original Igbo race never tolerates evil. Never, never. I said never. They never tolerated evil, regardless of who you are. They never ever tolerated evil. Some people are calling Hopos or the Excellency. 
And you are telling me that these are Biafran, these are did they have the blood of our ancestors in India? Is that what you're telling me? Of course not. Such nonsense must stop. They have killed the seminarian, he's dead. His name is Nadi Michael. Dead. They abducted them and they, they slaughtered them. And tomorrow you talk about one Nigeria. This, let's move our country forward. I say, may shame be your portion now and forevermore. Shame befall you and befall your family and your household. You are evil. Anybody preaching one Nigeria is evil. It's working for Lucifer. You are evil. You are Satan incarnate. She never be well with you. May what Nadi Michael went through, may your children suffer it. May your grandchildren suffer it. May they be beheaded at the hands of full and wild beasts and terrorists in the north. Listen carefully. I preached before for, for uh, World Book Congress in America. This very next item we are going to look at is for the zoo. Those that call themselves Nigerians. Those who sat there, they are there. Their house is burning. They are killing their military in Borono, seizing their vehicles, overrunning villages. The same army, the same Nigerian army, with uh, their one star general, is in my village patrolling. Patrolling the venue of a funeral service, burial ceremony. Burial ceremony. Now, I want people to begin to appreciate the depth of evil in the zoo. You're telling me that ISIS in West Africa, they call them Iswab, they killed three soldiers, three. They seized two military vehicles in Brown. This is according to the paper in the zoo, punch. Nothing is happening in the north. The soldiers who are meant to be fighting insurgency is in my village, in my compound, patrolling, circulating every day. And you're telling me that such a place is a nation, is a country, that they deserve to have a flag flying. A country of, of, of supposedly 200 million people. Are you telling me that 200 million people can be so daft and useless at the same time? Is that what you're telling me? That 200 million people can be so stupid that terrorists are killing your soldiers. Those soldiers are in a peaceful, quiet village in Biafra land, perambulating. And when I say there's something wrong with the brain of a black man, people don't understand it. Yes, uh, there are vehicles we are seized in Brown. <laughs> The uh, fighters from the Islamic State of West Africa province, they stumbled into the town of Askira late on Friday. That was last week. They went in a dozen pickup trucks, guns blazing everywhere. Nobody is holding them responsible. Nobody is blaming the Fulani for what, this, for what is happening. They closed your borders in the south. That is how stupid the south is. So useless and so pathetic and so useless. They come, they shut your borders in the south. They open their borders in the north. And nobody knows who is a Nigerian citizen anymore or not. Uh, terrorists are coming in in their droves, abducting and killing you. And you come out the next day, hey, let's work on the security of the nation. Let's, let's try and, uh, and bring the nation together. I don't think you're a human being. All of you that think that way. All of you. All of you. None of you. None of you are, honestly. The, the military is in the north killing people. The, no, the, the terrorists are killing them in the north. They, are, they themselves are busy killing people who are unarmed in the east. I, I, can't, I can't begin to, I, I cannot rationalize this. I cannot understand it. There is war front. There is war raging. Their mothers and their wives are in IDP camps. We are the soldiers are raping them. Is there in the news? You know this very well. Instead of those from the north to say to recall their army in, in Biafra and I said to them, What are you doing there? The battle is here in the north. They left them. Oh, he said, said Namde Khan, he wants to stop us from taking oil money and gas money from Biafra land. And you are looking at Namde Khan, looking at IPOB. The more of you end up in IDP camps the more your new governments are taken. But if you recall all those soldiers they put along all those checking points, all those idiotic places the, that they occupy, maybe you stand the chance of defeating insurgency. 
You don't know that God is miraculous. You don't know that you can and we, we, we serve is miraculous. I see you're busy in Biafra and roaming around endlessly like the idiots that you are. Your land is being ravaged by terrorists being taken. If you don't know, that is how daft they are in the zoo. A bunch of hopeless people. When I call them a zoo, they say, oh, he, he's insulting us. He's insulting. I'm not insulting you. I am telling you the truth. Tell me a country where their soldiers are being killed, helicopters being shot down, villages being sacked, ravaged. You allow you to, somebody will sit in their office in Abuja at the military command and I say, uh, Today I am, we are deploying soldiers now to, to Namdekano's compound in Isiama uh, What is the reason? Is there any war going on there? No. Uh, they are about to bury their parents. Let's go there and fight a war. God in heaven. And you claim you, you are you are you, you have got, you have brain in your skull. You are telling me that all those ambassadors that they have in Nigeria, you somebody is telling me that all those the German ambassador, the British, uh, don't they see all these things? The U.S. ambassador, don't you people see this this travesty going on? Are you blind to the idiocy of the zoo? What they are doing? Are you that that foolish that you cannot see what is happening in the zoo? You give them support. Mike Pompeo gave them 40 million a few days ago to support them in the north in what they are doing. But the 40 million is being spent sending troops to a peaceful area to go and kill innocent people who are terrorists in the north, ravaging the whole place. And you're telling me that such people are human beings. Is that what you're trying to convince me? You're telling me that, that we Africans we are normal. You think I'm going to pet, pet you, pet you? Oh, oh, I'm black and proud. Rubbish. Your brains are empty. You cannot reason. Because if you can reason very well, there is no way you produce cocoa in Africa and import chocolate from Western Europe. If your brain is normal, there is no way you can have all the natural and mineral resources you have in Africa and you're drowning in the Mediterranean. There is one simple reason for it. We are daft. Daft to the core. What did that say? Oh, I have PhD. I, I went to this school. I went to that. Your brain is empty. The collective is what matters. Collective. Not you as an individual. A lesson that World Book Congress must learn. A lesson they ought to learn. But in America, I am a for my pharmacist, I'm a doctor, I'm a nurse, I own my own business. Just you. The day you die, your children will go and marry Mexicans and your name will be gone forever and ever. Mad people everywhere. They are even in there. Kidnappers open fire, abduct passengers on Lokoja Abuja Highway. Vanguard newspaper. These are um, what I'm telling you. You know, you know before they will say uh, they, they fabricated the story. It's a uh, friends. They are fabricating story. It's from their paper in Nigeria. Nigeria newspaper daily. Vanguard. Kidnappers open fire, abduct passengers on local Jabuja. Why can't the army in Biafra and the army in my father's compound? Why don't they go and patrol? The, that is their job. Go and patrol local Jabuja highway. They won't because they are all in the same game together. They are all terrorists, all of them. They have one agenda to Islamize and to enslave all of us. Forget all the nonsense. Uh, once in a while, Sultan of Sikhita will come out. We need to maintain tolerance. All of us. They know what they are doing. How do you go again? Of course. They, they are chewing here away. Alive. And they are blowing soothing breeze. One person is a, a Buratai is there conducting or waging a jihadi war against their friends. And they, 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 they bring us all time. Uh, we are one uh, people, religious unity. Uh, that buffoon, go on. Uh, let, let's pray for one Nigeria. His own village is gone. If you doubt me, go and ask him um, to why Danjuma. Is Plateau not gone? Of course it's gone. They've, 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 they've taken it over. It's gone. Because they were busy fighting their friends from the east instead of facing the, re the raw enemy from the north. 
Uh, they say, uh, uh, police fight back. Uh, uh, rescue some passengers. Uh, arrest for kidnap, uh, uh, kidnap uh, uh, members or whatever they call it. Uh, 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 people belonging to the gang. But nobody, nobody, you, you cannot hear Willis to Winter or somebody ask or, or their, or their uh, uh, Senate House or whatever rubbish they call it, House of Reps, ask me the question. If we are having insecurity in the North, people are being abducted and being killed, beheaded every blessed day. What is the army doing in Isiama and at the home of Nam Khan? What is the army doing there? Let the army justify what they are doing there. But they, they won't ask. And that is why they are dying. They think that they can mock God. You know who God is in heaven? Watch and see what is going to happen. Zoo will be decimated. I'm write it down now. There, yeah, there, I'm going to I don't believe in. I'm, I'm not in battle or any of these idiots. Brand envelope prophecy. What I tell you is what is going to happen. I speak with the divine authority from heaven. I'm telling you that the zoo, you see. God in heaven will destroy Nigeria beyond recognition. Write it down in a piece of paper. It's called implosion from within. They will eat their own flesh. What I tell you is from heaven, direct. I, 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 in fact, you should give that clip to Amaka to, to distribute so they will hear it. In 2015, I said it. I made it very, very clear to the whole world that um, <laughs> it's coming. I won't be about ISIS before they can. Did I warn you about what is going to happen in 2015? Let me see if I can actually find the clip and play it that the world may bear us witness. Yes, thank you very much, Solomon. Sorry, St. Teresa Catholic Church in Madala. I remember. St. Teresa, 25th of December 2011, when they planned to get rid of Jonathan. President Goodluck Jonathan was in office. This was the opening salvo that we have come. You must be gone. I went to Sweden. Some of you don't know. I went to Sweden. I spoke to a very, a very powerful journalist in Sweden. I asked him what is happening. He said, oh, Jonathan cannot tackle the, uh, the insurgency and the terrorism. Uh, we need an ex-general who can do it. I said, from here in Sweden, you know an ex-general who can do it. And it's Buhari. And at that time, I knew, of course, what this does best. They have shared all their money. Uh, I, I, I keep saying it all the time. The reason why the U.S. ambassador, U.K. high commissioner, EU ambassador to Nigeria, the reason why they don't file accurate reports back to their home country is because once you assume that position, they give you money. One million dollars in, in, a, in an account somewhere, offshore account. They give you all the details and you go there and you take your money. So they can, they can be chilling people beside the U.S. embassy in Abuja. They will never find that report to, 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 to their home, home country. They won't, they won't go to the state government in America. Never. People can be... They, some of you saw what they did to the Shia protesters. Army came out of broad daylight, lined up, and was firing at innocent people. We fought and fought and fought to separate that news all over the world. No way. America called their embassy in Abuja and asked them, is this report true? They said, no, that the video is a, is a doctored video. They, they asked why the U.S. ambassador, that the video was doctored. This is what is happening in the zoo. All these ambassadors, tell me any other country in the world, the level of insecurity you have in Nigeria today, and nothing is happening. It is only the effort we are making that is making the U.S. State Department and Trump to even speak, to say, oh, we are going to defend prisons and all that. Said, no, we want to maintain peace in Nigeria so that uh, the region will not collapse. Who told you the region will collapse? What was the region like before Lugard came? We want to go back to where we were before. You came from Europe to colonize useless, hopeless Africans. Yeah, I know some of, some of them will start cursing now and, and run away from the truth. What is the truth? I'm telling you the gospel truth. You are all there. I'm in Nigeria. Where is my flag? Where is my badge? I'm in Nigeria. We're Nigerians. Be patriotic. Are you not ashamed of yourself? Are you not ashamed of yourself? I'm asking you. So you're telling me that a man can come from Europe and come to your land and tell you who you are. And I ask you again. Before Lugard came, before 1914, what nationality was your grandmother or your grandfather or your great-grandfather? 
You can't answer, can you? Because you're black, you're stupid, and you're dumb. Your brain is sealed with idiocy. You cannot reason. That is why you are proud to answer the name of a country created by a white man. Shame on all of you that call yourselves Nigerians. Shame on all of you, I say. They are killing people. No wonder. They are, they are killing people in the north and the army is in this army for the patrolling. That, 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 that portrays, or should I say betrays your, your idiocy. They, they, there are bandits uh, hijacking luxurious buses. They are burning our market. Some of you still pretend. Oh, no, 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 the market is on fire. Oh, wait, the market is on fire. Oh, the market is on fire. So you don't know they're all coordinated terror attacks by the Muslims, by the family terrorists. You don't know that. Not by the Muslims, please. Don't get me wrong. Not Muslims, but by full and terrorists using the name of Islam to commit impunity, burning down our markets, timber shed everywhere on fire. They they uh, they head their cattle towards timber shed or the market. In the night, they go and they light it. If you try them, they'll call the GOC of 82 division. Oh, Haruna oh, Musa. Oh, oh, listen immediately. Listen, they he released. Those arrested that went to 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 Uzo one to kill people, but they not release all of them. In Anambra, if you kill one of us, you give us five hundred thousand, according to Governor of uh, Governor of Anambra State Obiano. And some of you are walking about as if uh, everything is normal, and you're telling me that your brains are correct. <laughs> oh dear, unbelievable. Absolutely unbelievable. The zoo is crumbling, it is on fire. Of course, uh, why won't it be on fire? They are playing with us. Our mission is divine. God in heaven sent us to do this very work we are doing. That is why Biafra must come in. It doesn't matter what you do, it doesn't matter the amount of propaganda, it doesn't matter the amount you use to bribe the, the, all the foreign missions in Abuja and in Lagos. It doesn't matter if you've bought over CNN, bought over Financial Times, bought over Telegraph in the UK. It doesn't matter if you have bought over uh, uh, Associated French Press, uh, AFP. It doesn't matter. In the end, their friend will come. It doesn't, I'm being honest. Remember when we started? We used to tell them, I used to tell people that it doesn't matter what you do. We'll get to where we're going. Today, they have seen the light. Do you think IPB is, is do you think anybody can stop us? Let's be very serious. Do you, think, do you think anybody can stop us? Nobody can. Not even that wretched slave Okum says he's the CP of uh, Adia State, called Police Commissioner. Uh, IPB should not come to, to Isiaba Faru, they shouldn't come to Umrah. They have been designated a terrorist group. The idiot is there and the full and the man are killing people in his village. He is wearing police uniform in Omaha. Talking like an, like an animal without a brain. These are the idiots that we have. His name is Okon. He's a Biafran. But he needs to serve his masters in the north. And then, sometimes I begin to wonder how did the full actually manage to get people in this position? How did they manage to do it? How? How did they manage to do it? Some of you are just moving about endlessly and sheepishly on a daily basis without the capacity to reason or to think for yourselves. Very, very sad indeed, I say. Extremely sad. Extremely sad, I'm telling you. Very, very sad indeed. Oh, come. They shouldn't come. But Fulani has men are going about killing people every day. In Adia State, you've done nothing. They rape, they kill, they pillage. You do nothing. It's peaceful IPOB coming for burial. There you want to come and stop us now. But I'm saying this live on air to the whole world so they know. So that when you want to call me a terrorist, you can you, you can say it with every ounce of conviction. I am saying this to the governor, I am going to say the governor, to the commissioner of police in Adia State, Mr. Kong. I'm saying it so the world can hear. If anything happens to any IPOB member on the 14th of February, all your children will be killed. If you like, you try. If you like, you try. Any army officer, I saw one in, in uh, army uh, jeep with one red star, we will find your name. Any commander, I'm letting the whole world know, I want Britain to know. So when it happens, I'll be arrested. I want to be arrested. I want to go to a law court in England to argue this very matter. If they kill anybody in my father's compound on the 14th, I swear to God in heaven, 
every commander, everybody in charge of any platoon or division that fire that shot, your children will be dead. We will hunt them down wherever they are in the world. We will slaughter them in broad daylight. We will go to prison. Then you will see how painful it is to lose a child violently. Try us and see on the 14th. That's uh, uh, another local party, you know, come by We're not going to drag this issue. We're not dragging it. Uh, Commissioner Okun, are you hearing me? I said, come to Isiama Faluku and kill somebody on the 14th of February 2020. I assure you, before the end of this year, we'll find your children, your wife, will murder all of them, we'll slaughter all of them. Please don't recognize what I said. Mad people. Now you see madness. We have left the people alone. We are not armed. We have not killed anybody. We have not. Look at the protest we go on. Has anybody ever reported that, that anything is missing? Do you know we are IPOB? Do you know why they call us Do you know the reason why they call us that? Because our mission is spiritual. It is not carnal. It is not something that money can buy. We are not looking at material things. We are looking at the message from heaven that the children of God in Biafra must be free. That is what we are doing. Leave us alone to do our thing. Defeat us with the, with the weight of your argument. You are busy. Any evil you see, you shoot them dead. Oh, because we've been quiet. 14th of February 2020 is the Rubicon. Come to Afra and kill somebody. All of us, including Burata, who will hunt your children and will kill them. You, you, you people are very good at saving recording. Save this one. Because when it happens, you will tell Britain or you will tell USA. When it comes in, arrest him. He did this, he did this. I will gladly submit myself for arrest. Let us go to court. And then the court will ask you what are you doing in this village? Mad people everywhere. Useless. Come to Islam for the one the 14th and kill somebody. I swear to God, this Shuko Kavan, I, 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 wash, I, I worship and I praise. I swear to him, from Duratai down, all your children will be killed. And I'm giving an order tonight. You must find where the children live, all of them. All of them. Every police commissioner, every commander, it's two division, uh, airborne division, in, in watch everywhere. Find me their children, where they are schooling, where they are living. All of them, find them. Let us show them our own madness. Because they have shown us madness, we will now show them double madness that we are insane. When I said I'm insane for Biafra, they don't understand. Now I will show them how insane I am. Their children will be killed. I am telling you this. Come to Afra and shoot on the 14th. You see what happened to you. All of you, one after the other. Oh, go on, I'm warning you. I, I'm blessing you on warning. I'm letting, because before I do something, I tell you what I'm going to do before I do it. I'm telling you now, come to Afara and kill somebody in my father's compound. My father and my mother's burial, your own children will die. You can't bury them. Those who are good at um, issuing quick notice, prepare to issue quick notice. If your soldiers come to Isiama for you to kill anybody, then you issue quick notice in the north. All those who are encouraging Fulani Janjaweed in our land to be doing what they are doing, all their impunity, killing, have we killed anybody? Have we gone to war with any? Have they not formed their uh, Amoteku? Have, did we, do we not support them? Even uh, the, the Shege, Dampanza, whatever rubbish they formed in the north, we are in support of it. Leave us alone. We are not armed. Leave us alone. This idea of police coming to people's houses, going to my lawyer's home to go and kill people, that nonsense should stop. If you come to this, I'm telling you, I want the zoo papers to write it down, what I said on this very day, on this very broadcast. If you come to this, I'm African fire one shot. Every commander, every commander, that commander that led them to say, shoot, you're not shooting at terrorists in the north. You've come to my village to shoot people. At my own parents' funeral, you will bury your own children. From Buratai, with, uh, if you like, go and hide them in Saudi Arabia. We are there. Go and hide them. That time you will not have fun. If, ask yourself this question. You think that Boko Haram, they are fanatics. In IPOB, we are, we, we, we are madder than they are. Come and shoot. Then the result will come in a few weeks time. Then you, you, you'll be issuing invitation to people, come, I, I want to bury my children. They, are, they, are, they have been killed. That thing you want, you people want, you will see it. Including the and the governors. That thing you want, you will see it. Since you people are women, you are so useless. You are so useless, you have no mouth. An idiot, an ill-educated bastard will come from the north into our land. 
with military convoy and be killing people and you keep quiet. All of you, you will see what will happen. Come to your cell and and shoot. And, and you, you will see what will happen to you. Uh, we're not going after you. Just only your children. So you know what it means to buy a casket. You know what it means to weep. Your names will be wiped off from the face of this earth. Your name will no longer exist. Come and try us then and you will see. Before, we've, we've left, we go to pray in the field, you come and you kill us, you go. We go somewhere, we kill us, we go. In my own father's compound, my father's burial, my mother's burial, you want to come and kill people in my compound? Come, we are waiting for you. Mad people everywhere. Have you seen, have you heard before complain that we abducted people, that we killed anyone? We are preaching the gospel of peace and BFR restoration. You cannot handle it. Because of your waywardness, your backwardness, your illiteracy, and your savagery, you do not understand what is called public discourse. You don't understand it. You cannot defeat us in a debate. That is where you, you read. Anywhere you say, yeah, they're, they're terrorists. We filed an appeal for nearly three years now. You are there dribbling and deceiving yourselves after obtaining expert motion. Shameless zoo. Shameless country run by idiots. Left, right, and center. Mad people everywhere. Is it only us who are complaining? I keep saying this. My deputy uh, tells me all the time, don't say it, don't say it. I'm, I'm sure now he'll be, he'll be wondering why am I saying this out in the open. Deputy will tell me which I'm for my deputy. Very good man he is anyway, by the way. Don't, don't say it. Don't, don't, don't say that uh, Buhari is dead. He's not Buhari, I'm go. Buhari is dead. He's Jubilee who is there. He is the message. It is the truth. I must preach the truth. The world may not want to hear it, but I am under instruction that I, as long as I'm behind this microphone, the truth must be spoken. The truth must be preached. And that is precisely what we are doing. Don't take my word for it. Some of you ignorantly and foolishly in the zoo. Look at that young man they sent to Ethiopia. They say he's a uh, Buhari. You know, you know I, I, I can't. let me tell you why I despise the way black people visit in Africa. I am the number one self-critical person, I as myself, I'm myself included. Let me tell you why I lost respect for black people. Two things. You see, 1914, I'm the so-called creation of Nigeria in 1914, and uh, Jubril al Sudani. Those two things made me realize the depth of the stupidity of your average Nigerian regardless of how many degrees you have. Now, ask yourself this question. If the real Buhari were to be alive, what would Aisha Buhari be doing saying things are getting out of hand in Nigeria? I, mean, I, I can't understand. Uh, when we come from there's another day, you know, we, when we are small, we, they, our parents, they will raise us with proverbs and adage to make you, they tell you fairy tales, uh, you know, regarding tortoise and, and uh, frog and all the rest of it, so that you have some sense. You know, come with your brain, you can reason, it's called discernment, you can discern, you can read between the lines. You're telling me in a country full of professors, about 9.8 million professors in the zoo. The wife of a so-called president is coming out and telling you things are getting out of hand. This happened um, uh, 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 well, this is out of hand in Nigeria. And all of you are quiet. Everything is normal. And I'm asking you, if Melania Trump will come out and say that um, things are getting out of hand in America, what do you think will happen to the husband? Huh? His poll rating will dive down immediately. He will be removed from office. This is the wife of your so-called president. A president with, um, without makeup. He looks like a 42-year-old. Look at his hands. One day his nose is big. The next day his nose is small. All of you are blind. Some, uh, some, some journalists even can bring out uh, at that time they started with the plastic surgery on his nose. That one, his nose is so flat. I say, This is Buhari. And I look at and I and I say, God, why did you mix me with Who are these people? Who are these people that cannot reason? Why am I amongst them? 
I'm telling you the truth. Why I, so I ask myself, God, why am I among these people who cannot reason? Can, don't you have another use for me? Can't you use, ask me to do something else? Why am I with people who cannot reason? Aisha is saying things are getting out of hand in Nigeria and people are so sheepishly blind that they cannot put one and one together to give them two. Very, very sad indeed. But we are here to educate them. We are here to educate them. Some of you don't know why Trump banned uh, uh, some people from the zoo from entering USA. It is because of their track record of terrorism. Abdul Mutalab is he from the US? He's not full of boy from the north. The shoe bomber. They want to go and bomb America. And I'm saying to Britain, have you ever caught any Biafran in a terrorist act before? I keep asking Britain, why do you have this hatred? Why, where did this hatred come from for Biafra? I keep asking Britain this question all the time. What is the hatred? We believe in, uh, you brought Christianity. Uh, some of us believe in, uh, some of our people believe in the Jesus Christ you gave them. We have, we even have an Anglican church. My parents' body will be taken to Anglican Church, St. Andrews. He's even asking St. Andrews. He needs to say, I'm a Yet you hate. Oh my, my God. Doesn't make any sense to me. There's something wrong somewhere. You brought Christianity to us. You taught us about all these things, weird and wonderful things in the New Testament. But you wanted to know, they asked you not to preach Christianity, to accept Quran. You did. And when you're living, you gave rulership to those with the Quran. But Britain is supposedly a Christian country. People are dying. Prince Charles could not make it to Joss. They said it's unsafe. He ran, he ran back to the, to, to the UK. That is the mess you created. But the most annoying thing is that those who are living in the mess, those who are living in the iniquity, those who are living in the mire, in the darkness of poverty and deprivation, they themselves cannot see it. Which always leads me to wonder, man, do and the mad, are these human beings with brain in their skull? That is why they cannot debate me. They can't debate me. They know they cannot last. I'm telling you, they cannot last for two minutes. They'll be vaporized. They can't because they have no brain. And there are animals in a zoo. They are called Nigerians. They cannot reason. There is war going on in the north. Soldiers being killed. Helicopters shot down. Your mothers and your children in IDP comes. But your army is in my village patrolling. And you tell me that they are normal. You tell me that they have common sense. I want to see if I can really find that very, um, um, I want to call it prediction, because it's a message I, I, I give to the world. If you listen to it, you, you, you'll be saved. If you listen to it, you will be saved. They said our satellite is down. They said, our, of course, they will stop it. That's what they always do. Our satellite is down. That's a, they fight us everywhere, but are we not winning? They fight us, are we not winning? Really, do, do we care, really? Mars, your former sugar check, please get hold of him. They said our satellite is down. They said our satellite is down. Our satellite is down. Our satellite is down. That is what they said. Very, very sad indeed. Exceptionally sad indeed. Extremely sad. Very, very sad indeed. Very, very sad. We want. And our satellite to be up and running. Mazio your form as you look into it, please, deputy, as well. If it is now back online, I want to be notified. I want to be told. Our app is also not working. They have taken it down as well. You see how they're fighting us everywhere. Uh, great information. Our app is not working. I want to know if the app is up and running again, please. Do let me know. Our satellite is not working. Our app is not working. I do not know what is happening. I do not know. I do not know. We shall try again. We shall try again and try and see if this can be rectified. They are, they are seriously attacking us and we are going to fix it. We will fix it. Of course, we will fix it. We will fix it. We are trying all we can to try and fix it from there. We can go to Facebook and join us on Facebook, please. We, you can go and join us on Facebook. 
go and join us on Facebook if you can. This is Radio Biafra. We are live and we are direct. We are trying to connect. It is not allowing us to do so. It is not allowing us to do so. We are trying to go back to make sure that we connect. It is not allowing us to do so. Not allowing us at all, at all, at all to do so. This is Radio Biafra. You must bear with us. You must bear with us, please. You must bear with us. The enemies are working over time, but we are defeating them. We are defeating them. There's absolutely nothing they can do about it. There is nothing they can do about it. Absolutely nothing. Please, uh, Deputy, you must also check your side because uh, it seems to me that our main platform is down. Our main platform is down and we are trying to fix. This is Radio Biafra. The time now is, um, I think we're almost time. Um, it's um, half eight, isn't it? It is almost half eight. We are trying to, that's in Biafra land. We are trying to fix this very problem is saying cannot connect live it cannot connect it cannot connect and this is going to throw us off a little bit because it is not doing it it is not doing it it is not doing it i am trying to make sure that they are attacking our main software we used to broadcast they are attacking it our main software. They are attacking our main software. Our satellite is okay. Please ask people to please go to Facebook. I don't know if there's any other place we are streaming this very broadcast live. They should go on Facebook to be part and parcel of this very effort we are making. Part and parcel of it. Part and parcel of it, please. This is Radio Biafra. We are live and we are direct. And the whole world is listening. They have attacked our main source that we use. You know, that's how they spend money. They say there is no money to take care of the poor. And of course, 95% of the zoo is very poor. But they have money to be at a chasing <laughs> Radio Biafra all over the place. They know that this broadcast will be earth shattering. They know it. They know it's Armageddon. They know it. That is why they are fighting very hard to try and attack us and they're attacking us from source but we must continue headsmen have hacked to death three policemen in delta fulani headsmen have killed three policemen in delta there is no quick notice for fulani people in the in the east no quick notice in the west no quick notice in the middle belt but their reign of impunity continues across the board that is from their own paper as well the nation newspaper that is from their own newspaper as well, The Nation. Please, you must spread this very message, please, if you have, if you are connected um, on, on the Facebook stream, please, make sure that our people receive it. Call people closer to where you are and ask them to join you, please. Ask them to join you to listen to this very broadcast because our enemies have struck us right at the source. It has never happened before. It is happening now. We must try and fix this problem tomorrow. They are said they are suspected headsmen. They have hacked to death three policemen along Ubolu Ela Road in Oshimini, North Local Government Area of Delta State. Hacked to death. But they are in my village patrolling. Policemen are being killed. A police commissioner is telling me that people shouldn't attend burial ceremony. People are being killed. And the policeman is telling you that people should not attend a burial ceremony. That they will be fired upon. But you cannot fire the terrorists who are killing your fellow police officers. You cannot. Very sad indeed. We are under serious attack this very evening, but we are continuing to preach our gospel. It must be preached and we will play it tomorrow, the day after tomorrow, until the whole world hears it. They said here, an eyewitness said the three policemen were, at, were attempting to stop a motorcycle carrying two men who refused to stop. One of the police officers pulled out his gun to threaten them. They refused to stop and eventually he fired. Immediately they stopped and moved towards the policemen. They shot two policemen and one of the four and he pulled out a dagger and stabbed the third policeman to death in Delta State. But if you ask the police commissioner in Delta, what is your problem? He will say it's IPOB. 
it's just people flying in the Canada, my problem. But in that same division where he is the overall commanding officer, his fellow Fulanese have hacked to death three people. And uh, uh, Commissioner of Police Okon is in Omaha, is on nine, talking rubbish. These are the type of people you have in Africa. Morons. When, when they call us names abroad, we complain. And say, oh, oh, they're, they're, they're being racist. They're being racist. But we brought some of this nonsense upon ourselves. Our stupidity, in fact, is, is staggering. I'm telling you. Three policemen are dead. Three policemen dead. And uh, people are busy looking for, for, for IPOB. Everywhere is on fire in the zoo. They are falling left, right, and center. And you know what they have done? Uh, listen to Nigeria. After killing three policemen, after raping and pillaging and destroying and basically abducting, kidnapping people at will and killing them, you know what happens to Boko Haram and to Fulani Headsmen and to ISIS in West Africa and to Al Qaeda in the Maghreb? They grant them amnesty. Uh, you're gone down and vive to become a president of Nigeria, and you win. So, uh, what have the so-called um, socio-cultural gathering, those cowardly vultures, what have they done? Nothing. It's only to issue statement. The right to, uh, to guardian as well. Uh, dear guardian, newspaper of Nigeria, we are not happy with the granting of amnesty to Boko Haram and to terrorists. We are not happy. Uh, this will divide Nigeria. Uh, something should be done. And uh, that's the end of story. Okwa Google. That is the end of the story, it is finished. That is the type of country that some of you live in. That is the type of country that some of you exist in. That is the type of country that some of you say, oh, I, I'm a Nigerian, I'm very, very proud. What does that tell you about your brain, the way you reason, the way you think, the way you articulate issues? Granting amnesty to murderers, to killers, to rapists, but coming to Isiama for to do Python dance eight. I don't know what uh, other name can. Uh, I don't know if Python dance at a funeral service. I don't. I have no idea. Somebody should tell me. Go and share, please. Share this. If you're listening on Facebook, you share the link. Very, very important, please. Absolutely important. Absolutely critical. Very, very vital. Very, very important. What have they said about the regime security in the zoo? Because they are the ones. They look at them, Tanko Yakasai, or whatever his name is. Those um, glorified Alamajiri in the north, they are spokespeople. Buhari was bringing fresh hands in security. Who are they? I keep 
ask even my Yoruba friends to ask themselves and their conscience, who are the people causing insecurity in Nigeria? Why are you people afraid to say it is the Fulani? They cause insecurity, not just by going about and, and killing, raping and pillaging. They create insecurity as well by disobeying their own laws. The government itself is the architect of insecurity. They are the progenitors of insecurity. Somebody will win election, they can put somebody else and put him in power. They control the judiciary, they control the legislature, they control the police, they control the army. For a new throughout, they control customs, they control NDDC, they control drugs enforcement agency, they control road safety, they control um, um, customs. Have I said that before? They control Nigeria Post Authority, they control Nigeria Airports Authority, they control basically and virtually everything. And they are also the ones in the army and in the police. Everywhere you go, I was so along with the likes of Okon, who are who are possibly cloned for any people. They are everywhere. And they are the ones complaining of insecurity. But they are the ones in charge. I have never seen such hypocrisy in my life. I think I read a very brilliant article written by somebody who said that the problem of Nigeria is Yorubas and Igbo people mixed together. Because they refuse to come together to work together. That is why the zoo is the way it is. And I believe him completely. I believe him. Of course, we, with, we, with the launch of Amoteku, we have destroyed all of that divide and rule from the north, isn't it? We have overcome them completely and totally. Completely and totally. Bringing fresh hands. Fresh hands from here, they won't promote anybody. Even if they retire uh, uh, Buratai for incompetence, the next person coming is another Janjaweed from the north. Another Alimajri. So the problem continues. After all, they are the ones that created the problem in the first place. They are the ones who created the problem in the first place. Invite everybody to please come to Facebook to listen to the gospel because our enemies have, you know, dealt a blow this evening, but it's of course we'll fix it tomorrow morning. They have gone to the source to try and stop what we are doing. But we are preaching this very gospel. This is Radio Biafra. We are live and we are direct. Unfortunately, those in Igwacha cannot hear us and all across Biafra land by Igwacha, I mean Port Harcourt. The name is Igwacha. Harcourt is not a Biafran. Harcourt is not Ikwere. Harcourt is not Ogoni. Harcourt is not a John. In case you don't know, the name is Igwacha. That's the proper and the original name, not Port Harcourt. Vicant Harcourt who was the Secretary of State for Colonial Territories, was a pedophile. I'm, I'm going to Port Harcourt. Look, look, I look at them and I laugh at them because they don't know what they're doing. Do you know what is happening in the zoo? The Senate is now going to probe the closure of land border, of non-closure, rather, non-closure of land borders in the north. Non-closure. But they closed the ones in the south. Telling you about security. It's about rice. But the ones in the north are open. And people are moving about sheepishly and hopelessly and foolishly as if nothing is happening. And they, they, they mourn, they mourn. You indulge the full enemy, they mourn their iniquity deepens. Nobody can tell them what to do. They close the, they, they come to the south, shut down the borders, and in the north, all uh, people from money can come in. And now the Senate will probe. Have you heard about it again? They said the Senate will probe them. Since the 1st of February, 1st of this month, they said the Senate will probe them. Have they probed the North? Why are the borders in the North open and the ones in the South closed? Nobody can ask. Nobody can talk. But you have the likes of um, social critics, Russia, Inca, and the rest of them. They are all over the place. Why can't they complain? Nobody can complain. But when we talk on IPOV, they start jumping up and down. Because we are the only ones with the metal who has the the, 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 the the balls to be able to rise up and speak against injustice and iniquity in the zoo. Iniquity from Fulani, headers, iniquity from Janjaweed in the north. They cannot uh, bring that their nonsense to, 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 to us. Try to Islamize us, are they, are they drunk? They, they know they can't do it. 
They know that IPOB is stopping them. It's only IPOB that can stop them. Remember when I told the whole world, I was telling them, if you want change, if you want restructuring, if you want change, if you want their lives to improve, boycott elections. Had they boycotted elections, this nonsense that brought hope of them to power in Imo State wouldn't have happened. It would not have happened. Why did it happen? I ask. Why did it happen? It happened because our people don't listen. They go for the cheap option all the time. The cheap option. And the program here. Cheap option. In the end, in the end, in the end, they regret it. Do you know, had Nigeria boycotted elections in 2015, by now your lives would have been better. You will now sit around the table and discuss and negotiate and find out the best way to cohabit. That's for those of you interested in one Nigeria. But you don't listen because you don't reason. Even when you do listen, it goes in through one ear and it goes out through the other. It is now that PPP is telling Tanko to step down. But we warned, I warned you, once they removed on Morgan that they were going to rig the election. I told you that. Somebody who did not study common law is chief justice in a country that practices common law. And you want me to respect a Nigerian? Are you drunk? You want me to respect somebody who cannot reason? Somebody studied Sharia law. He is presiding over common law jurisprudence and you're telling me you people are okay in the brain? Oh, of course not. It's only now they have realized. Had all of them, both of the, those in PDP and other parties, come to their senses to say, we must boycott it. That is the only way to achieve it. No, it's your right. It's your democratic um, dividend. It is, what is the standard of one other of say? It is the, um, wait, what's it? Dividend of democracy. Your PVC. Your card. Your vote. Make your vote count. This is a new method. The name of state. They leave you. You do all your nonsense you want to do. Tanko will tell you, oh, is that our slave there? They say, yes, what's his name? Is Uzodema. Bring him to the Supreme Court. You go through appeal court, appeal court will uphold the decision of INEC and all the rest of it. You come to the Supreme Court. And there, there and then they will say, he's our boy. Hope Uzodema is our slave, our new slave to replace Abonga Awosa, Okura Awosa. And that's it. And Imo State is gone. And uh, uh, monarchs in Imo State uh, caution Yedjan to withdraw lawsuit. Give us the names of those monarchs. Let's think about how Kondoshi. Criminals everywhere. And uh, tomorrow they can't say, oh, we are Ibo. We are I'm not one Ibo. So, can they reason like fools? Like fools. They say, I, I, I insult, why would I insult you? Are, are you normal? If you're normal, would I insult you? Do I insult people who are reasonable? I only insult fools who cannot reason. But, uh, I remind you that you cannot reason. It's only now that we're waking up. Uh, 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 we want to uh, replace Tanko. How can I replace Tanko? It's too late. Way too late. Way too late. Insecurity, we are in unpredictable situation. Do you know who said this? The problem in Nigeria, the insecurity, the terrorism, the chaos, the mayhem, the rape, the murder, the slaughter, the police accidental discharge, the killing of innocent people, the beheading of thousands of people on a daily basis. They call it insecurity. I call it breakdown of law and order. Do you know what the answer is? Those perambulating in my village are the army that is meant to be combating or fighting insurgency, dealing with all these problems. They are in a peaceful village circulating. We have them on camera everywhere. They think we are stupid. Uh, once, not in front of my house, so we have them on camera everywhere. Once you approach one kilometer to my house, you are on camera and the whole world is watching you. I'm telling you, come so you'll be prepared. So that once they raise their rifle to shoot at us, anything that happens, they, I know that day they will even pay some people and say, go and go to the crowd and start trouble. But we are IPOB now. 
Aren't we? We are one family, we know who we are. Insecurity in Nigeria, there is a problem going on in Nigeria, and Nigerian government have decided to deploy their troops to a very tiny village that is going to hold a burial on the 14th. And what is their response to the insecurity? Listen to this, Nigerians, listen. What is the response of the federal government of Nigeria to the deplorable state of life and property in that contraption? Do you know what the said, federal government said? We are in unpredictable situation. Of course you will be in an unpredictable situation because you've gotten your priorities wrong. Soldiers that should be fighting war in the north and in the east, in Biafra land, molesting people, taking money, setting up checkpoints and roadblocks. If, if those 56 checkpoints you have from Yigwacha to Enugu were to be established in Brunel, you would eradicate uh, Boko Haram. 56 checkpoints, I said 5 6 checkpoints from Yigwacha to Enugu. 56. If they mount 56 checkpoints only, from Damatru to Medugri. There will be no terrorism again in the north. But they are all in the east. That is the same way we come from Apu Kunkana, I know the world is listening, but they must listen. And sometimes in Bible words, we are saying in the oldest language in the whole world, which is the Ibo language, the oldest in the whole world. That is why, that is the language that the angels speak in heaven. As a the ancient. That is the language of heaven itself. For those who do not know. Sometimes they wonder why I mix it in my broadcast. And I said to them, with all due respect, I'm not English. I'm a British citizen, yes, but I'm not English. I, I'm not. And that is why sometimes I speak in the language of the ancients. And I must do so. There is insecurity in Nigeria. And the National Security Advisor, another full name man, Baba Ghana Monguno, they're all everywhere. That's it's a, a president uh, full name, uh, National Security Advisor full name, um, uh, uh, Intelligence Service full name, DSS is full name, <laughs> and you're wondering why there is insecurity. <laughs> People who don't go to school, and you're wondering why there is insecurity. I asked you this before. Do they have any engineers? From there, the answer is no. Do they have scientists? The answer is no. Then what makes you think that uh, they can make any difference in your life? If you say, they say, say you're, you're being, it's, it's ethnic jingoism. That's the new one, ethnic jingoism. <laughs> ethnic jingoism, of course. We must speak in a way that our mothers can understand us. Addressing reporters after an emergency national council meeting, chaired by... <laughs> Uh, Jubril, that they call Muhammad Buhari, the National Security Advisor said that the security challenges were multidimensional, internal, external, diplomatic, economic, and defense-related grammar. Ask him, Mongono, who is in charge of internal, Fulani, external, Fulani, diplomatic, Fulani, economic, Fulani, defense, Fulani? Why won't it fail? I ask. Why won't it fail? I ask you, why won't the zoo be a failure? You allowed failures to rig themselves into office. Why won't Nigeria be a failure? You were there, you folded your arms. They released the terrorists. They terrorized all of you into submission. You got rid of Jonathan. You, you now have uh, Mekaba in charge. One, when uh, Buhari is dead, they bring another one for you. If they, you know they can do anything they like? If they like, they can change the constitution to a third term. There is nothing any of you can do. You can do nothing. You are spineless. That one said, I'm, I'm working for, for uh, every life matter. I'm working for peace. But when Jordan was there, you were, you were, you were protesting. And they you, you were protesting. These are the Muslims that let that turn to Christians that uh, idiots are following. I feel sorry for some of you, honestly. Honestly speaking. I feel sorry for some of you. I think uh, my deputy said he will, he will go after them. I'm waiting for him to go after them. Because they, they, they need to be shredded and destroyed, all of them. Shredded and destroyed. Shredded and destroyed. Oh, we, we are fighting terrorism. We are fighting corruption. 
And some of you bought the nonsense that they're fighting corruption, but they are uh, the ones who are corrupt. They say they are fighting corruption. They are the ones who are corrupt. Do you, you have, some of you have heard about the Malab Malabu case, the Gojek corruption cases. They say they, they jailed Ojo Zakalo. Ojo Zakalo is in jail. Hey, hey, uh, uh, we are fighting corruption. Can't you see Ojo Zakalo is in jail? He's a Biafran, he's a Christian, so they can throw him in jail. Look at all the names of the governors they claim to have jailed from the north. They're all either John this or that. Uh, they're all Christians. Some of you don't know what is happening. This is according to independent research and analysis. That Malami, your so called AGF, Malami, another quota product of Sharia legal system in the north, is the one who is now feeding large on Malabu corruption case and the Goje corruption scandal as well. These are the people that you, you, you see, one of the reasons I want to address him, they say, uh, uh, the AGF at the general of the Federation. A thief. This was the boy that ran to Zet Kafrati or whoever to prescribe IPOB in the middle of the night. They just went there and said, Oh, in our view, uh, Jubilee said he should be prescribed. These people are giving us problem. Ohanese is in support. Governors are in support. Prescribe and they prescribed. No court hearing. No evidence was standard, none whatsoever. That was how uh, I feel sorry. I feel sorry for Nigerians. I feel sorry for you because uh, they burden your carrying. Of course, that load you're carrying is made up of stupidity anyway. Ignorance. Before you shift it, it will be very difficult. These are the people fighting corruption. These are the people that told their fight. It's a good thing that a bunch of loot keeps coming back. You know, it's embarrassing for them. It reminds them of how corrupt they are. A bunch of loot keeps coming back. They remind you of how corrupt those people are. That how Joseph Kali is in jail. Ganduje, Gandola is the, the, the very corrupt Cardinal State Governor. Or the Cardinal State Governor is, is all over the place. I celebrity. There is one Nigeria for you. And the consequences of it, they are off. I want to take you back a little bit. I want to take you back. It's not, it's not something that uh, Nam the Kano said, or whichever, or IPAB. This is what they're saying. I want to take you back just a little bit so you understand. We've dealt with corruption. How those who claim they're fighting corruption are even more corrupt than corruption itself. They are more corrupt than corruption itself. This Fulani gang in Abuja wreaking havoc on the economy, on the lives of ordinary men and women. Everywhere they have failed, economy they are a failure. Everywhere they are a failure, economy they have failed, uh, security they have failed, defense they have failed. In every sphere of life, they are a failure. But I'm sure some of you will take a bribe and even recommend them next time. It was Buhari, the dead one, who stopped South African mercenaries that they actually hired during the war against Biafra. They are the ones that stopped them from fighting Boko Haram. It has been in the public domain since 2018. Independent, verifiable deposition made by these people. They are, they are called uh, Specialized Tax Training Equipment and Protection, STTEP. His name is Ibn Balo. He was the one that revealed how President Muhammad Buhari stopped them carrying on, stopped them from carrying the fight to Boko Haram in 2015. It was Buhari that stopped them from fighting Boko Haram. Now you understand it, don't you? This is this, this is from a white South African. They hired them to come and fight Boko Haram because, as I told you before, that Nigeria never fights its own wars. Never, ever, ever. They don't have an army. What they have is a gang of murderers, civilian murdering gang in, in army uniform. They're terrorists. I told you before that they cannot fight any war and win. That's why they, they ran to Egypt. Let's cooperate. They went to Chad. Let's cooperate. They went to Niger. Let's cooperate. They cannot fight and win any war. I'm telling you. If not for the natural, irrational hatred that Britain has, 
towards Biafra. Because once anything starts now, the first people they will go to is Britain and get Britain to lobby for them. And Saudi, for Saudi Arabia will lobby for them and then Britain to fight Biafra. Now that they can win, it's a good thing that I have acknowledged that they are facing us diplomatically and they are losing. They are losing. They, this man called Ibn Balo told the world that it was Buhari that stopped them from fighting Boko Haram. Because they themselves cannot fight Boko Haram. They went and hired mercenaries. But he said, oh, the, the general is in the village. He's coming back to the village today. He's in town. What's his name? He's the, he's the GOC commanding to do div. Big, big titles, big, big names. Very empty people. They still went to South Africa to go and hire the Specialized Tax Training Equipment and Production Team, STTEP, headed by Ibn Balo, to come and fight their war for them in the zoo called Nigeria, because they cannot fight. They have never fought before, and they can never fight. That is why they go about looking for alliances, because the Nigerian army is only good at killing civilians. That is what they are good at. Nothing more, nothing less. Which one are we going to mention? Which one are we going to leave? Which one, I say, is very, very sad indeed. Very, very sad indeed. This is Radio Biafra. We are live, and we are very, very direct. They said that the North is now a theater of violence, not by me. I didn't say it. This is from Dogar. Some of you may know him. Some of you may know him. He is the immediate past speaker of the House of Reps. So what I'm saying to Yakubu Dogara is, the, he is saying that the North is the epicenter and theater of violence. The former speaker of the House of Reps. He himself is a northerner. Epicenter of violence. Then I asked myself, what are you people then doing in my village? What is that army doing in my village? He says then this is according this was carried by the nation newspaper before he said we made it up. Nation reported by one Abdul Gaffa Allah Belewe. Remember he's from, from Kuala State. You know the the Fulanized Yoruba part of Kuala State. And I'm I'm praying for them that the uh, Udua Republic will come so they will see some sense. Dogara lamented that the North, and indeed Nigeria, has suffered from Boko Haram uh, ISIS, led by Al Banawi. And there's a new one called Ansaru. Have you heard about that one? So they now have five terror groups sponsored by Fulani people. Ansaru insurgency to former head of conflict, bandits, uh, banditry, kidnapping, ethno religious conflicts, and cattle rustling, among several others. Former Speaker of the House of Reps in Nigeria telling you that Uwawasa North is the epicenter of violence. But to the Nigerian army, the epicenter of violence is Isama Faruqi Ibek. You know why? And the British government uh, are there in Abuja laughing and looking at them. So is the US uh, uh, mission to Nigeria. The epicenter of violence in Nigeria is in the North. But the Nigerian army are in the East. Killing innocent people, killing civilians. And you're telling me that uh, uh, Nigeria is not a zoo. A zoo is better than Nigeria. These are some of the military checkpoints between Aba and Omoy. As they are killing them in the north, the epicenter of violence is in the north. I'm going to name some of the few places. We will have our cameras very soon. Our cameras will be beaming all these things live to State Department in America. U.S. State Department will be watching every checkpoint we have in our land, live, that the world may know what is happening. How many do we have there? A stretch of only 40 kilometers. 40, we have 23 checkpoints. 40 kilometers, 23 checkpoints in one state between Aba and Umwai. Flyover Junction at Aba, the army is there. Urata Junction in Aba. Army, for all Fulani, murderers. Ayara Junction in Aba, Army is there. Enyimba Junction in Aba, the Army is there. Tony Mas Junction in Aba, Mopol is there. Umojima Junction in Aba, Mopol is there. Osisioma Junction in Aba, Army and Mopol combined. Tony Mas by Express, Police of Mopol. Umuimo Junction, Mopol. Umaduro Junction, Mopol. Arunga, everywhere you go, Army and Police, Army and Police, checkpoints everywhere that the North is the epicenter of violence in Nigeria. 
but they left the north, no checkpoints in the north, all the checkpoints are in the south. All of them are in the south. And you are telling me that Nigerians are normal. They should be called human beings. They should be respected. They should be honored. They should be valued. Who told you that? Who told you that, I ask you? Who told you that? Everywhere. From, from Iwacha to Abba, Iwacha to which is uh, that fool called Port Harcourt, Iwacha to Abba. How many checkpoints do we have from Iwacha to Abba? <laughs> Twelve. Everywhere you go, checkpoints. Everywhere you go, checkpoints. And as somebody said quite cleverly, I love this. Somebody said this, and I love it so much. You know what the person said? And it's the Sultan of Sokoto. For once, he has made sense, and I agree with him. The North has everything except sense, according to the Sultan of Sokoto. <laughs> exactly what I've been saying to you people from time. You never believed me. Now it's come from the Sultan. You believe me. He said this. Well, he's, he's, let me just tell you what he said. He accused the Northern elites. Elites is, uh, is um, you know, the glorified Alamajiri. Uh, what's his name again? Uh, the, uh, Tanko, Tanko Abdullahi and uh, Tanko Yakasai. They are the, the elite. Uh, my goodness. He accused the northern elites of lacking sense of honesty, implementation, and qualities to organize a society that works for all. Not from me. I've been saying this. It's a good thing that the Sultan of Sokoto listens to Radio Biafra. I'm very, very glad that he listens to what we preach on this very platform. He has repented. He has seen the light. The same way that uh, uh, Yoruba brothers have now seen the light. That every, everything we've been saying is true. They have now seen it. The same way that I can tell you that even the Sultan, the Satan himself, at the epicenter of the cabal in the north, he has seen that what you are preaching is true. I'll repeat what he said. So people will say it's coming from me. He accused <laughs> Tanko Yakasai and uh, the other one, I've forgotten his name, uh, Junaid Mohammed. They are the northern elites, elite over Alamajiri, elite over Babiala, elite over impoverished beggars. You say you are an elite. Where is your elitism? How have you improved the lives of your people? You are elite and you are still moving cattle from place to place, destroying people's crops and their farms. And you are elite. We are the elite. What useless elite in the north? Let me repeat what the Sultan said. Sultan accused the northern elites of lacking sense of honesty, implementation, and qualities to organize a society that works for all. In other words, all of you that claim, including Bola Amiri Tunibu, that claim you put uh, uh, Buhari and now Jubril in power, you are all very foolish. That's what Sultan is saying. Because they lack the capacity. He is saying that they lack the capacity to organize a society. They do not have the capacity to organize a society. That is what the Sultan of Sokoto said, the head of the feudal system in the north. Now you will believe me, won't you? When I say something next time, you believe me. Because as I said, eventually everything I say comes to pass. People will begin to open their eyes and their ears to receive this very gospel of redemption. It's elite. Elite for what? Are you people, what is your elitism for if you cannot positively impact the lives of those who are on the streets, those who are poor, those who are less privileged, those who are not as educated as you are. If you, if at all you claim you are educated. We are not the elite, they are the Second Republic um, um, Senator, Third Republic nonsense. How have your Second Republic rubbish impacted on the lives of the people who are carrying bombs today, kidnapping people, slaughtering and raping at will? You claim you elite. Uh, you people are the ones that the Sultan is referring to. You people are the problem. You have everything but no common sense. No common sense. And let me tell you why they have no common sense. In the midst of the condemnation of the Sultan of Sokoto, you know what they did? They all rallied around and said, Oh, we are the Arewa Constitutive Forum. We are the Northern Elders. We declare support for Buhari and service chiefs. That is the Nigeria you're in. 
I remember when they said that Jonathan wasn't fighting corruption very well, even Edwin Clark came out to condemn good luck Jonathan. But I wish the South can learn something from this. So to the North, it doesn't matter what they do in office, their own is their own. But you are busy from the South, be you uh, Biafran or be you Duduwa. The same that you are busy in the South, uh, uh, trying to be holier than thou, you want to be objective. But those you are dealing with don't know the meaning of objectivity. Don't understand it. Insofar as the stark failure of Nigeria is apparent for the whole world to see, they still went there and felt that Jubril is under siege. Of course, they call him Buhari and the service chiefs because people were calling for their resignation. They went to Asarok to say, We are behind you. Continue with your incompetence and your failures. Continue uh, patrolling Isama Farouk instead of going to, to the north to go and clear the bandits on the highways. That is Nigeria for you. That is the zoo for you. And that is why the zoo must fall. Nigeria is an abomination before God. Nigeria is a stain on the continent of Africa. Nigeria is a blight on the human race. If you don't know, you know it today. The level of stupidity prevalent in Nigeria is enough to sink any advanced civilization. What am I saying? If you pack all Nigerians and take them to America and move Americans over to Nigeria, America will sink in less than 10 years. You will recognize it. That is the extent and the level of stupidity they harbor within themselves. Or should I say within their brain. Very, very sad indeed. Very, very sad indeed. And what, you know, you know they, they know how to defend themselves. I, 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 I admire them at least in that, in that regard. Even Mustafa, Al Mustafa, that works with um, Wazrikes Masop. He, he said, I bet he didn't steal any money. You see the way they, you see how they roll. You see the way they roll. He said, I bet you never stole any money, that it was others that stole money, not her budget. Can you believe that? Can anyone believe that? Can anyone believe that? It wasn't a budget that stole money, it was uh, those before a budget that stole money. And some of you believe him. That is how they fight for themselves. That is how they defend themselves. That is how they make a mockery of everybody. That is how they make a mockery of everybody. But some of you won't understand it, will you? Because you want your one Nigeria. You think if Nigeria breaks up, you won't get oil. I've said it many times. And I want to remind everybody that every component part of Nigeria as presently constituted will receive oil and gas for free from the Afro land. So what about oil? When we publish our guiding document, when we publish our testament, you will see all of it inside it. Guaranteed to be supervised by the United Nations and five other countries. So don't worry about that. You get your oil. Just leave us alone. It is not our, it's not about our oil and gas. It is about freedom. That's what we're fighting for. Absolute freedom. It is now they know that you, some of you don't know you're selling oil and gas to China. You're still going to China to go and borrow money. Does that make any sense to anybody? You sell oil and gas to China. You still go to China to go and borrow money. You know how much they have borrowed on your head? This very incompetent foreign regime, you will not know until you're, you're hit with a very heavy... The day the Chinese will come and take over your, your forest in your village, then you realize that the mess that the Janja would have put you in. You see, Jubril, some of you are... Oh, oh Harry went to... to, to uh, what did he... What last place he went to? He went to, to London, to Buckingham Palace. He went to ask me to remove his cap, he ran away. Uh, I think today he's in, he's in Addis Ababa. That is the, the mess that some of you don't understand. You are in. They are borrowing money every blessed day. One day they will come and take over your ancestral lands. You start cursing China. China, you did this to us. You did it to yourself. Your, your hopelessness allowed an impostor from Sudan to be answering your president. Your idiocy made it possible for him to go back the second time. You have yourself to blame. Let the Chinese finish with the coronavirus. They are coming after all of you. Your land 
and your properties. Then you regret it. Do you know how much this you have brought from them? Do you know how much this very incompetent Fulani regime have brought from China? Some of you have no idea. You're sheepishly moving about every day, saying, oh, I'm a Nigerian. I mean, inside you and outside you, you are a property of the Chinese state. Courtesy of, of Abaki Ariza Asorok, of Fulani regime. It's not from me, you got it from me, you got it from the Sultan of Sokoto, that they cannot organize any society. The Sultan said it, they cannot. These are the people, your, your, your Excellency, uh, the President, Mr. President. <laughs> I feel sorry for you people. They keep borrowing from China, borrowing from China, they can never grow their own. They can never ever grow their own. They always go and borrow from other people. The latest one is 17 billion. The federal government on Tuesday explained why it decided to approach the China Exim Bank for a 17 billion dollar loan. So ask them the oil money. Do you know the funniest thing? All the people occupying NNPC, all the oil portfolios are from the north. And I can't hear the so-called Niger Delta complaining. You know, uh, some of them, <laughs> their own idiots is even worse than average Nigerian. Their own, their own stupidity is, is immeasurable. Who are the people in charge of all the oil sector street, uh, um, um, areas you have in the zoo or Fulani, NMPC? Ministry of Petroleum. Everywhere you have them. No wonder all the sales coming from the, the, the shipment of oil and gas, no one is hitting the treasury. If they are getting money from oil and gas, why would they be borrowing 17 billion from China? 17 billion. And you ask yourself, how are they going to pay back? Let me hear any of you complain against China when they come for you. They, they, then you will know something. Keep, keep voting. In the next, um, is it next uh, four years, you go back. You go back and vote. You go back and vote, it's the turn of your ancestors then. There are many mad lunatics everywhere. This is Radio Defa, we're live and we're direct. They, they want to implement uh, uh, a confab report. That is their business. That is not our, our business at all. They keep burning down your markets, but you do not know that, do you? They burn your markets, you say nothing, they rape your mothers, you say nothing, they behead your priests, you say nothing, they go to Zoba and they sack everywhere, nothing. They are fighting us in Ibo. You do nothing. And you are praying for one Nigeria. <sighs> My goodness, it's, it's very, very painful. Extremely painful. Extremely painful what we have to go through. Some of you may have heard about the people that we are boasting that they have four wives, five wives. I want to use this very thing as an example of why we cannot live in the same country with these people. I want you to listen to me very carefully. We stay, or we adopted the British system of one man, one wife, recognized by law. But in the north, you have people who are marrying four wives. And my question is this. Can any Nigerian tell me any country in the world where you have such disparity in marriage laws? Show me one country in the world. If you go to USA, can you marry two wives in America? Regardless if you're Muslim, if you're atheist, if you're Christian, if you're Jew, if you're, regardless of who you are, can you marry more than one wife in America? You go to jail. It's called bigamy. You go to prison. Can you marry two wives in America, or in Mexico, or in, in Britain, or in Germany? The answer is no, there's only one. But in Saudi Arabia, you can marry two or three or four or five, and as well in most other Muslim countries. Now, you come to Nigeria. Those in the South believe in one man, one wife, at least, the modernists, those who are who came after 1960. But in the same country, in the north, we have people marrying four, five, six, seven, eight. 
and you are in the same country, operating under one law, under one constitution, yet you have diverse marriage laws that a man brought the four wives to the chambers of the House of Reps, House of, House of Representatives, boasting that he has 27 children. Now you understand the mess you're in. I will ask you again, tell me one country where it is the law, or should I say the accepted norm, where a part of the country believes that marrying one wife is good, and another part believes that marrying four wives is good. That means that there is a dichotomy in Nigeria that can never ever be reconciled. So anybody telling you about unity, moving together, developing the country together, is not your friend. You cannot develop a country together where some people are marrying one wife, giving birth to two or three kids, well, whereas some other people are having four, five, six wives, giving birth to 27 children. Is that fair? And if you know, if you agree that it is not fair, then how can we be in the same country together? Let us even consider it for a moment. Marrying the two laws together. One is monogamy, one is polygamy in the north. How do you reconcile the two? There are irreconcilable differences. That is what we've been preaching from day one. That we have so much divergence in our value system that we cannot be one nation. It is impossible. It is impossible. Well, that's believe in appointing a Sharia student or a Sharia law graduate into the position of a justice. We don't believe in it. We believe, we believe that somebody who has been schooled through common law should be a chief justice. How do you reconcile the two? How? I don't understand. How do you reconcile it? How would you like a Sharia judge to preside over your case? He's using Sharia um, 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 legal technicalities and terms of reference to determine uh, you know, uh, or, or to settle a dispute or a case that was either committed or commissioned under a common law system. How does that work? So you're telling me now you can go and take a grand caddy from Saudi Arabia and take him to Minneapolis or Indiana in America and say, send him to the Sixth Circuit um, um, Court to go and preside. That's what it means. It's like going to Afghanistan. You bring a, a mullah from Afghanistan. You say to the mullah, please, mullah Omar, come to, come to New York and become a district judge in New York. Is that going to work? I want people to, uh, uh, this UG black people, to reason for once. Try and reason. What would a Sharia judge be doing in a court? Are you telling me that Britain that gave us common law system, that Britain can now go to maybe Oman? and pick up somebody from there and say this uh, is a Sharia judge who schooled in Quran to come to the old Bailey to preside over a case. It will never happen. That is what is happening in Nigeria. We don't hate anybody, but our value, the way we are as a people, we cannot mix. It's not possible. We can't. It's, it's impossible. You cannot be having 27 children in the north with four wives. And you expect us in the south to, to, to have one wife. If we are lucky, we have two or three kids. No, it doesn't work that way. It just doesn't work that way. There is something unfair about it. There is something unjust about Nigeria as a nation. And that is why people must be allowed to go their separate ways. But let me give you an example. Had all of you boycotted the 2015 general elections as we were pleading and begging from the beginning. Even the last one that happened last year. By now, this man will not be boasting of his four wives and seven children. Because when you get around the table and ask them, please convince me why I should be a Nigerian, he will tell you, I have four wives and seven children. He's telling him, I only have one wife and two kids. Do you think it's fair? He will be the one to open his mouth and tell it is not fair. You know, ask him, do you think we can be in the same country together? He may say yes, it doesn't matter, we are in the north, you are, are in the east, you can do whatever you like. Then you ask him again, do you think it would be right for us to bring a chief justice from the south, who is a Christian, schooled in common law system, to come, to come and become 
an appeal judge in the Sharia Appeal Court you have in the north and watch his face, how he will react. He will tell you now. They wouldn't want you to take a Christian judge schooled in common law to the north to go and preside over a Sharia court. Never. But they can bring Sharia judge to preside over the common law legal system. Is that fair? I want people to reason. Is that fair? Now you see why we don't want one Nigeria. Anyway, I'm waiting for them in a debate. I'm not giving them expo. I'm going to say, yeah, win a debate so that we can completely eradicate them from the face of this very earth. We can eradicate them from the face of this very earth. Somebody was complaining. These are the people moving so just to, yeah, oh, it's, it's IPOB, everybody's giving us problem. But hear what they have to say. Federal government said the world has abandoned Nigeria. The world has abandoned them. So when we told you that we would destroy the zoo with the truth, you didn't believe us. I said I would destroy Nigeria with truth, nothing more, no arms, unless they come to my village to come and shoot. If they shoot in my village, believe you me, their children will be in serious trouble, wherever they are. We'll find them so that their father can bury them the same way they keep uh, making us to bury people all the time. Let them, let them uh, uh, try it and see how, how enjoyable it is to bury a loved one. Instead of them to be remorseful for causing the death of my father and my mother, all they're saying is that, oh, come and start shooting at people attending there. Come and shoot. Our CCTV is there alive, relating to the whole world, relating to British Foreign Office, so that when it starts, they won't deny it. It, it's, it will be relayed live to the whole, the top governments of the world and to CNN and to BBC so that when it starts happening from our, when our own madness will start, the wounds will go back to their propaganda. It's a secession. They are trying to secede. Secede from me, your own Secede from who? Who were we before you came? How can I secede from something I did not agree to? Who were we before you came? and merged us together. And because we are Africans, we are foolish, we are hopeless, we don't know anything. That was why we accepted that nonsense in the first place. No, this is, did Japan agree? When you want the Japan not kick you out? Did Japan not kick the Dutch out? When they tried their useless nonsense? Amalgamate your, 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 your father to your mother. Mad people everywhere. But you Africans, what do you have in your brain? Nothing. You accept every rubbish that goes, every nonsense that goes, you accept. If you can even find a way of importing coronavirus, you will. I preach the truth here on radio. We are live and we are direct. The time now is approaching. That is 27 minutes past the top of the hour, wherever you are on the face of this very earth. Uh, I, I have I wrote something which I totally and completely agree with. And um, with permission from him, I'm going to read this out. Because I agree with it in, in total, completely and totally. We want to let the world know that we are IPOB. This is, if you don't treat us well, we will go. You know why it's now saying it? Even some people are now saying it from Biafra and across the whole place. But no, but everyone wants to be free. Who started it? IPOB. You may not, you may not agree in public, but when, when you go into, your, into the quiet of your home, you go into the bedroom, you accept, you acknowledge. But it is IPOB that started this whole thing. You acknowledge. Everyone came at us with all manner of dissenting argument, but today an overwhelming majority has uh, uh, bought the idea of uh, that what IPOB is doing is correct. We make them aware. The emotical you have in your land is a direct product of IPOB agitation. Our call on this platform for Yoruba to rise up every blessed day, rise up and do something. You cannot keep supporting evil forever and ever. Do something for us. And they have done it. And we support them for it. Who started the They were quoting um, um, Danjima. Danjima said, Defend yourself before they kill you. Who started it? We did. I was in the USA. I told World Ebo Congress. Give us arms because they are coming. I have seen them, they are coming. Have they not come? Have they not come? 
Have you not noticed how fewer and fewer people are now coming out to challenge what Imam the Khan says? Have you, have you noticed it? Because it's the truth. We don't hate anybody. We don't. It is the truth. The whole world now knows that it is the truth. All this clamor, Amoteku, Shege, Dambanza in the north, whatever they call it. Did we not start it? We told you that the center cannot hold, that the zoo will fall. It doesn't matter what you do. It doesn't matter how many uh, influential publications you buy abroad. It doesn't matter how powerful your lobbies are in Washington. It doesn't matter how much money you give to the British High Commissioner to Nigeria. It doesn't matter. The zoo must fall. And they know it's going to fall. That's why they are running over the place. Uh, let's go and see if we can if we can disrupt the burial of his parents. Uh, they says nothing pains him. Let us see if we can carry the cops. Can you imagine what they're planning? That they'll come and take the cops of my mom and my dad since nothing affects me. Since this Biafra is 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 burning within me. The desire for Biafra is so much that I don't feel any pain. That's what Alamajid is saying. But so so you you've does he have not heard this before? In Asoro, that is what Abakiari is saying. That my passion for Biafra is so high, is so much that nothing, they know nothing can stop me, nothing. Nobody, one of a woman can. So why don't we go and abduct the 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 the, the, the dead bodies of the of the mother and the father? Let's see if he will not be pained. <laughs> That's what they're planning. That's why they're all over the place. We we're waiting for them. The, the, the world will bear us witness. Uh, they have prepared their lies. And I'm sure the British High Commissioner uh, have prepared all their lies. Oh, they came there. There was a clash. I'm sure European newspapers have prepared their lies. Oh, there was a clash. There is a clash going on. There is a clash. I, I'm in my house. Burying my parents and you came to my house and told me there is a clash. Thunder will fire you and fire you the rest of the family. I am in my house burying my parents and you're bringing your arms, your guns from Sambisa Forest to my house to cause trouble. And you're telling me there's a clash. Then you must have descended from the lineage of Lucifer. There will be no clash that day. It is them looking for our trouble so that the world may know. I know what they do. I know that Channel TV they have prepared. Oh, there was a clash. The army was going. They were throwing stones. As the army was passing, they, they, they started throwing stones. And the army tried to calm them down. And they said no. And they opened fire. There was a clash. We know all your headlines. We know what you're going to do. We know you very well because you are predictable. You are so foolish. You are driven by the ignorance of the full and you know nothing. Is only Britain defending you because of British hatred for Biafra. Because Britain knows that Biafra is the shining light of Africa. They know it. Once Biafra comes, it will have the same effect that Japan had in Southeast Asia. They don't want Biafra to come. Because once Biafra comes, Africa is free. You think that's stupid? They know. So um, I, I, I don't look at uh, Jan Jamid al as holding me. It's not them holding me. I know the powers that are stopping Biafra. But you go kick out them and we'll deal with them. You watch and see what is going to happen. Watch and see what is going to happen. Let me also remind them. I said this during the last broadcast that look at the state of Israel. Throughout history, God will use nations to punish Israel. And after that, those nations will suffer. Go and check it very well. It's in the Bible. For those of you that read the scriptures, go and check it very, very well. We, we are the first to start the regional security outfit. IPO they started with the, We are the first. Everything we are number one. They say we, we is the way we, we, we ride the way we boast. Why won't we boast? We are special. Do you know what is IPOB? Do you think IPOB is for is for refraps? Remember the names they used to call us? Miss Grant, uh, Gotta, uh, Tout, uh, Biafra, all, all those names are gone, isn't it? Because when they go back and they listen to this broadcast, they will say, oh my goodness. These people, they, they so foul. But they'll come out, they'll be pretending they don't know. But they of course, we know they listen. And they do what we ask them to do. Because we stand on the truth. History has shown, as I have a wrote, history has shown repeatedly that I, only IPOB is a practice. Only, I said only. Forget only IPOB. 
that is why we will not abandon anybody. We are not fighting for Biasa just to liberate, to liberate Biasa land alone. No, it's to set everybody free. I'm telling you the truth. Set everybody free. Set everybody free. Let people begin to decide. If, if Biafra has decided that one day they want to be in a country with Odudu, they sit around the table and they discuss it. This is what binds us together. This, this, this. Let's agree and they agree and they move on. That is how civilized, that is how human beings form a nation. That is how countries are created. Or through outright conquest. Not somebody coming from somewhere. You, 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 you. Come to Lancaster House. Come and drink tea. They drink tea. They say, oh, these are the elites. The elites went. They drank tea with Queen Elizabeth. And they danced with Queen Elizabeth. And they went back and idiots. They came back and they are not independent. What utter garbage. Monkeys jumping from one tree to the other. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. We have defeated the zoo. Those they called miscreants. We are more intellectual than them, more intelligent than them, all of them combined, put together. I have said this to people before. Forget all this nonsense. Put a microphone in their mouth, live interview, and say, answer this question. Don't allow them to go back to the library and be copying speeches made by, by great political writers. Intelligence has gone by. That's what they do. You see it on the bite. Hey, this big grammar. Rubbish. They copied it. Plagiarism. Put microphone in their mouth and say, speak the way man the kind of does when he's on interview. They cannot. Not in a trillion years. They cannot. They are not articulate enough. Yeah, those you are calling Miss Crans, they are now telling you they're, they're, everything they have said is now come to pass. You are now doing everything they ask. When we ask them to form security, they said, no, 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 you're trying to break the country. The same thing they argued against, they are now doing. Everything they accused us, everything they said, no, 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 no. Now the kind wants to, to bring war, he wants to divide uh, uh, the country He's in America. Today, Danjuma is asking you to be armed, and Moteku will be armed. Even a joint nation in Biafra say they want to form their own. Typical, very typical. I've warned everybody in every nationality in Biafra. I've been warning them from time. Some of them don't want to listen. You have to listen. Some of you don't want to listen. A job cannot go it alone and survive. You cannot. Not in a billion years, you cannot. The sooner you realize it, the better. Are uh, we supposed to stand on the table and discuss everything? Of course we will. Biafra is for everybody. Every impute matters. All the way to Igede, everybody must be must contribute to what the type of Biafra they want. It's not IPOB drawing a template and saying one size fits all. No, everybody must be involved in it. We are getting there, and when we get there, the confab will be held, and everybody will have his or her say. And then we come together, and the the constitution will formalize and ratify. That's how it's going to be done. Nobody is going to lord it over anybody else. Uh, that means our, all our education is for nothing. We didn't go to school to, to behave like primitive Africans. We can't do that. It's impossible. We are learned. We are learned. And that brings us to the end of our very live transmission today, which unfortunately could not be aired across Biafra land on FM. I thank all of you for listening, but I do have one or two announcements to make very important announcements to make very very critical very very important announcement to make i appointed a new woman leader in anambra it is unfortunate this in fact deputy will make sure that this program is replayed from tonight after this after we go off air it's replayed Wada Nkechi Kulu Onyebuchi is the new IPAB woman leader in the whole of Anambra. And there are some people who are not following our laid down rules and procedures. This is my final warning to them. If they continue to misbehave or not to adhere to instructions, they will be expelled from IPAB. I tell you, I say this to them. Onwatwebu is the Anambra state coordinator. 
If one want to call the meeting and you don't attend, you'll be suspended from IPO, you'll be gone. No appeal, no excuses, nothing. If one want to convene the meeting, you must, I repeat, you must attend. Because we are fighting wars on multiple fronts. We don't need insubordination and ill discipline. Obey before you complain. The first thing I was taught when I went to Golden College, oh my, of course, the finest secondary school in the whole world. For those who know, should I say the finest high school in the whole world? Formerly Fisher High School. Now, as soon as you go through the gate as an onion, the first thing onion is there is um, is class one student, uh, a fresh man. Once you go through the gate, the first thing they teach you is OBC. You obey before you complain. Attend the meetings and then you can complain afterwards. I listen to you. This is the final warning. Once or once you convince a meeting, you must attend. If you don't attend, you're off. The same thing goes with our women. Any meeting convened by Mwada Nkechi Kulonyebuchi, you don't attend, then you're off. You're not one of us. As simple as that. That brings us to the end of our program tonight. But I want to play something for our people as a way of sign off, to sign off this very program. What I said very many years ago, which, should I say, unfortunately, have come down to rest. I let me play it for you. ISIS will enter the zoo and card unless, and this is from an Islamic newspaper. As I told you before, anything you hear on Radio Biafra is correct. I told you on this platform that they will come for you. You see, let me tell you one thing that people don't know because you don't know history. I forgive some of you because in your schools in the zoo they don't teach you anything. I want some people to actually go and sit down and study the history of Islam. Islam is the only religion that has never stopped growing. Islam is the only religion that has never stopped expanding through militancy and war. Others have stopped, only Islam. Christianity is based on convincing people, telling them about the message of hope and restoration of Yahweh Heshua. Of course, immensely corrupted, that we know for sure. But Islam believes in expanding through war, and that war is coming. Well, I must be put on record. And which I I wanted to record this very broadcast and play it all the time for our people to also understand and listen very carefully. And I will say it tonight. And if you come to me in the future, I will refer you to the broadcast of the 8th of June, 2015. And as I made this very comment I'm about to make now at precisely 10 minutes to 8 p.m. in the evening. If ISIS comes down into the zoo, of course they are part of Boko Haram anyway, if they fall, not if they, because they are forged an alliance already, if they, they launch any attack with the name of ISIS on the zoo soil, if they come to us to give us weapons, I will decline it. I will allow them to kill all of you before we mount any counter-offensive. Let me tell you one thing that you don't understand. Some of you, you claim you went to school, but you didn't go to school. Because if you went to school, you will understand how Islam works. Islam is coming for you. They must come for you. It's a M-U-S-D, must. There is nothing anybody can do about it. Only you can defend yourselves. This headline here is the confirmation if you need one. I think I said it yesterday. Today is being coming that ISIS is coming, not just Boko Haram, but the real bad people that are coming. They need access to the oil and they will get it to secure the financial base for their continued expansion within the whole of sub-Saharan Africa. The zoo is seen as pivotal. And Biafra land is where the resources that are looking for is lying in. They don't trust Buhari anymore. Buhari was their godfather, they no longer trust him. I mean, Boko Haram in this instance. Buhari, they thought, would give them Sharia immediately. Buhari saying, I don't belong to anybody. From that day, they intensified their bombing. Some of you cannot reason, you cannot see very well because you are blind. But at least you are lucky. You are listening to Radio Biafra. Very, very lucky indeed. I'm telling you the truth. Or else, I can only knock off Fufu in your blindness. It is that darkness we've come to shed light on that you can see properly. If they enter the zoo, I will not command this army. And I'm how I need guns and I need I have the men. I need guns and I need bullets. That's all we need. And then we win.
I have been sounding this warning. I've been telling you, you think we are joking. They are coming. Your mothers will be raped. Your sisters will be married off as slaves. I'm telling you that now. Right as I speak, write it down. Biafra land will be decimated. Unless we equip this army to defend us. If we don't equip our army to defend us, in other words, if we don't march this year, it will be very difficult for us to recover. Forget all this nonsense. All these so-called pro-Biafra groups you're saying, I was have brought them out to confuse you. I was have brought them out. That is why they cannot say what we are saying or do what the people are doing. These are our WhatsApp groups and you are not listening. That's now I want to morning you are not listening. Because the devil has gone into all these idols that you worship. The devil has gone inside you to harden your heart, to blind your eyes that you can no longer see. That day I will tell you to remember the broadcast of the 8th of June 2015. I will tell you to go back to it. I need guns and I need weapons. If I don't have guns and bullets, the army of Biafra cannot defend your towns and villages. The sooner you get that into your thick skull, the better for everybody. You are black people, you don't reason, I know that for sure. But the sooner you take this very message seriously, the better for everybody. Or else you're finished. ISIS is coming. They will enter the zoo and Chad very, very shortly. Not as Boko Haram, they are coming in as their franchise and as their name dictates. ISIS is coming. If you like, you make this while the sun is shining, or if you like, you can continue to be dumb and stupid. That is entirely up to you. Why you will know? I won't be there. But you'll be dead anyway. And Radio Biafra will not report it. And nobody will. If you like, you give us guns. If you like, you don't. We are trying to save you, not you saving us. We we'll continue. As I said, when the time comes, I'll remind you, that was my voice on the 8th of June, 2015. I said, when the time comes, I will refer you to this broadcast. I am referring you to that same broadcast today, the broadcast of 8th of June, 2015. I told you they will come. Have they not come? I don't believe in village prophecy. If the APC gives you the result of a uh, tribunal, election tribunal, you can't be jumping up and down like a spring chicken. I tell you what will happen before it happens. I don't even call it prophecy. It is divination from heaven. Once I'm sat here, anything I say comes to pass, and anything I proclaim must happen. Because I saw Elohim, Chico the God, and I the fools we are playing with us, laughing and joking. Tonight is the 8th of February 2020. I refer you to my broadcast of 8th of June 2015. I told you you'll be killed. I told you ISIS will come as ISIS. They call them ISIS in West Africa. I told you that they will come like in the Maghreb. They have come. As they are, I told you they will come as their franchise. They will not affiliate with anybody. I said it. They will come as their own franchise. No affiliation with anyone. Has it not happened? That is why they must respect IPAB. We have no chineke. We are the children of God in heaven. And that is why we will defeat Okon, defeat every army that come against us. Because only God is heaven, is ahead of us and behind us. And will guide us through the day and guide us through the night. No matter the tribulations we encounter, ultimately we prevail, we win. Because Biafra is our religion. Biafra is my religion and here on radio Biafra is where we worship. Because Elohim Adonai El Shaddai Chukwoki Kabiyama Prumihelin is our God I thank all of you for listening and from me from here